the totals per year. So just by way of example, in 2012, JP, the allocation to Judge Marmelo was 19 weeks. But there's a, a, a footnote right at the bottom that qualifies that to say that 2012 only reflects the allocations for terms three and four. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, because I started acting as JP of the Houghton Division in June. So I, this document tracks allocations made when I took over, first in an acting capacity and then permanently in November of that year. Thank you, JP. Then if we look at 2013, it's a 30 week, 38 weeks allocation, then it goes to 39. I won't go through all of them, but just to orientate ourselves. So that is the total allocation for, for each of the years that's set out in that column where it says totals per year. That is correct. So below that, JP, then we, we once again have the years repeated. And then we have two broad categories of allocation. One is criminal trials and the one is other activities. Correct. And in those two tabs, it will set out, and let's use 2013 as an example. So in 2013, Judge Marmelo was allocated four weeks of criminal trials and 34 weeks of other activities. That is correct. And so for, for each of the years, we've, we've, you've also set, we've, we've set out what that allocation is, whether it's criminal trials or other activities. So below that, JP, then there's a, a term reserve judgments. It's a little star. Did you see that? Yes. So that line item on the, on the table sets out the number of reserve judgments relevant to the tribunal in terms of reference. Yes. So if we use the first two as an example, in 2012, Judge Marmela had reserved 11 judgments that form part of the terms of reference. In 2013, 22. Yeah, and then, that's correct. And then as we go down, it reflects in the status. In yes. other words, 2014, there were none. Three in 2015, nine in 2016, two in 2017, and then we go down the list. And at the end of that line, JP, it says the total is, is 49 in, in, in the table. That is correct. Those are the judgments relevant to the terms of reference of this tribunal. tribunal. And just to, just to qualify that, because we have a little star, and when we talk about reserve judgments, there is a note, the third line from the bottom of the page, one judgment was reserved in 2010 and one in 2011. And so that makes up the 51 judgments. Right? Yes, so, yes. But because it falls outside the period that you you kept data, it's not listed on, on, on the sheet. Yes. So JP, having regard to, to the allocations, um, and of course the, the key period we're looking at here is, is 2012 to 2020, 2021 possibly, 2020. If you look at the allocations, broadly speaking, and across those those years, what is your view on the nature of the work allocated to, to Judge Maumela? Well, he was allocated predominantly to criminal trials. And uh, in terms of heavy lifting work areas, you'll see that um, he was never allocated special motions. Those are the heaviest uh, allocations because these involve complex and very involved motion applications. He was never allocated that throughout my tenure as JP. He was only allocated two opposed motions per year, 2012, and as you can track it, in 2013, five, and then it goes down when, I mean, Compared to the norm of what other judges who are in civil in, in the civil section throughout, this is very light in terms of the heavy lifting areas that give rise to reserve judgments. So I mean if you have two opposed motions per year, when other judges have two opposed motions per term, this is very light. You no, know, he had five in 2013 and uh, one in 2017, it, it goes on like that. He, the other area that could qualify as uh, somewhat heavy lifting in the special civil trials, he only had six in 2019, that's six weeks. I would imagine that was one trial that was set down for six weeks. They, these are the trials that are long drawn out and also are involved. Um, other than that, 
the other work areas. Um, you could say Asian court is a tough work area, but he only had one in 2012, the whole year, two in 2013, and one in 2019. That's the sum total throughout my tenure as JP of the areas that you could regard as breeding ground for reserve judgments. And uh, so my view sitting here is that he actually had a very accommodative accommodation uh, allocation. Just, just, just to just to talk about the, the work, the, the the spread of work and, and, and the allocation. Um, we've already indicated that the reserve judgments, if one has regard to that that line item, yes, the bulk of that occurred in 2012 and 2013. Yes. And, and, and if one looks at, at the percentage, if you look at the, the little note, the footnote below, JP, um, of the 51 judgments reserved, those reserved in 2012 and 2013 constitute 64.7 percent yes. of, of all the reserve judgments that form part of the, of the terms of reference. So. Yes. And then the, the, the next line thereafter then specifies for each of the years where judgments were reserved. 2010, it was, it was 1.9, 1.9. That's the one each in 2010, 2011. In the next big area after 2012 and 2013 um, is 2015, where it's 5.8. Maybe just for the record, in 2012, the allocation or the, the percentage of judgments is 21.5, 43.1 in 2013. 5.8 in 2015, 3.9 in 2017, 15.6 in 2018, and 5.8 in 2019. So, so the bulk of the of, of the of the of the reserve judgments, as I say, 64.7 percent were in those first two years when 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 you started uh, tracking reserve reserve judgments in in this format. Huh? That is correct. And having regard to that, and you've made the general point that, that the work allocation was, was quite favorable. If having regard to that, if one has regard to the reserve judgments um, in the latter parts, 2015, 2017, 2018, 2019, and given that workload, on the face of it, would there be any reason for, for such an undue delay in handing down judgments, having regard to the, the work allocation? In, in those years? Well, I can find no justifiable reason why uh, those judgments would have been referred. Some of them, I think, uh, four years or so, and we'll come to them when we deal with them. I think, and w when you factor in the fact that we've got recess periods, recess periods are meant for judges to catch up on outstanding work. They are not given any allocations other than research duty, which is usually a week. Um, I know that there are a number of instances where judges sitting in criminal trials uh, postpone their matter, their part had criminal trials to the recess. But that, my directive applies to acting judges specifically, that when they have part head trials, they should postpone them to the recess so that they free up term time. Permanent judges have no obligation to, res to, to send, to, to postpone their matters to the recess unless those matters will last longer, not longer than a week. Then they can send that matter to the recess, right? Mm -hmm. So other than that, um, I don't see why these judgments would have been reserved for so long. Just touching on that theme, was there ever an occasion that, that you can recall where, where Judge Marmela explained the delays to you or sought an indulgence to, to, to make arrangements for, for judgments huh, to be no. delivered? No, he has never come to me to say he's got problems. In terms of why he can't write his judgments, I can tell the commission that I actually was shocked when I woke up, I think it was 2013 or 2014, I can't remember. I had received a number of complaints from parties wanting their judgments. 
and uh, he was doing duty in the Toyando High Court. I was still in charge of that court at the time. And I've been trying to get hold of him. I would send emails, I would try and call him. He wouldn't come back. So I'm, I'm just explaining to say I then got hold of him by calling Judge Makafula, who was the senior judge in Toyando, to say, Judge Maumela is there. I'm battling to reach him. Can you get hold of him? Bring him to the phone. I want to talk to him. And that's what happened, mm. right? Mm. And uh, I told him that I've been looking for you. You've not been returning my emails or calls. When next are you in Pretoria? And then we agreed that we would meet when he comes back to Pretoria. And when we met, I asked him, if my memory served me well, at that time, there were something like 28 judgments outstanding. And uh, he said to me, his laptop had crashed. And I was surprised. I said, but if your laptop crashes, it doesn't mean you can just sit back and do nothing. If you are not getting an assistance from the officials, you need to talk to me because I'm there for that, you know. Mm. So I heard that for the first time there, that his laptop had crashed. So I'm just responding to a question that he has never personally or directly approached me mm. to say, I have a problem, I can't do this, I'm ill. Give me time. Or I need more time to do this. Never. Sorry, could I just ask when these meetings took? When the, when exactly did this meeting take place? You and the judge with regard to the laptop crashing. I can't remember, Judge J P Davis. It's I think it's either 2013 or 2014. Yeah, it happened then. He was in Toyando. I can try and go back to my calendars and I can, when I have time and look for it, can find it. Chebby, we'll, we'll, deal, we'll deal a bit about, with your engagement in, in, in a bit more detail in a while. Just, just, to, just to conclude on, on the work allocation, so the, the document in front of the tribunal, from 354, it goes to 355 all the way to 361, but in, but in each of those years, just for the benefit of the tribunal, we have pie charts that set out the various allocations and, and the percentage. If we can use 355 as an example, page 355, that's the work allocation for 2012. It will then set out the categories of work. In this instance, unopposed motions, seven weeks, opposed motions, two weeks, civil trials, criminal appeals, civil appeals, so forth. That total of 19. And that sets out then what the specific allocation per category was, just yes. for the benefit of the of the tribunal. And maybe just a further point that the the only pie charts for the years when there was criminal as well as other activities. Yes. Of course, where it was only criminal trials, there's no pie chart because it is 100 percent allocation then uh, to the to the criminal court. So we won't go through the detail, the JP. Yes. Um, but that is for the benefit of the tribunal setting out in each of the years what the, the categorization was or the split was in each of those years. Just touching on the theme of, of the fact that you, that you, you, you had spoken to the judge um, and that generally he hadn't responded to your, to your emails. Huh? Yes. You, you cited a specific example now and you've given us more or less when the date was. But, but do I understand you, in, in general, when you did write uh, or inquire about reserve judgments, there generally wasn't a response from Judge Malmela? Generally. Now and then there would be a response probably from his secretary, but now and then from him. But in general, I would get no response. And, 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 and your, your evidence dealing with how you manage the reserve judgments is set out in the note. Yes. And the tribunal will have a reference to that. In the various thresholds, the three-month yes. threshold, the six-month threshold, the nine-month threshold. But generally yes. you say Judge Mamela didn't respond to, to, your, to, your, to, your, um, to your emails. Yes. As I said, there could be, have been one or two instances uh, where he, could, he, could, he responded. Like last night, uh, he sent me an email because I sent them an email on Friday, checking about part backlog criminal matters, and he responded last night to say those matter that matter that I specified yes was pending, and then there was going to be a process about how he gets out of it. Just just on that theme, JP, if you look at at the documents 
in front of um, tab G. It's, it's page 369 of the, the paginated bundle. It's an email dated this, this 14th of September, 2020. It's an email that you address uh, to Judge Maumela. Um, so so there's, a, there's an, it's an entire email trail that sets out the context of, of your email. Uh, it what, starts... It's, what page is it? It's page 369, the documents in front of, of tab G. Yes. Page 369. So I want to focus on page 369 because that is where you, your email is directed to to Judge um, Almela. But maybe just for, for, the, for the benefit of the tribunal, just the context here, because you receive an email from Judge Mabuse, and, and in response to that, you then engage with Judge Maumela, just for, just for the benefit of the tribunal, if you can just clarify that, that sequence and, and how it came about that you needed to, to write to Judge Maumela. Um, judge Mabuse was the senior judge. This was an appeal. He had allocated scribe duties to Judge Maumela. And uh, he wrote to me that he had not heard anything from Judge Maumela regarding the, the draft that he was supposed to send. And he says in his email, he tried to call him and did not get him, and that uh, maybe means the call would come back. So this was a, I get more, I get these types of communications very often from judges sitting in appeals where there's no response from either the judge doing the draft or the judge who's been sent a draft and not responding. Mm -hmm. So I then wrote to Judge Maumela, as you can see in the email up, uh, the top to say uh, he has an email from Judge Mabuse. Please contact him urgently to finalize the draft judgments. Did you receive a response to this to this email? No. JP? no. Uh, so, so this is an example of. of I'm sorry, Mr. Mob. Just to clarify one issue, Judge President, are you saying it is common that you would get such? Um, emails from senior judges in relation to other judges or are you saying in relation to this specific judge no in relation to other it's common okay. it's a big problem uh, justice jafta okay. where the senior judge would allocate scribe duties i mean this was a yes. full bench yes. they would have had more than three probably that day okay. and uh, the senior judge would have allocated himself two yes. to do and one to to the other judge, to Judge Mabuse, Ma, Maumela. Okay. And then when the draft doesn't come, because you try and contact him, say, where's yes. the draft, where's the draft? So it's common. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Judge President. Yep. And I now want to, to deal with, with, with some of the the correspondence that you received. So, so in your, in your, generally, uh, we haven't dealt with the evidence we have evoked. It's in your note. Generally, when when there are complaints from practitioners, you you would refer those to the to the judges. Yeah. For them to deal with. Um, is it also your practice that when there are complaints and and you don't get any joy, that you advise the litigants? To, to write to the JSC directly? Yes, I mean, it, it was never my intention to be a complainant against a judge. We work together. But I would, that would be my default position once I've tried to engage the judge to get the judgment and not getting it, not getting a response. I would then write to the lawyers, say, look, please, um, refer a complaint of judicial misconduct to the JSC and I would send the, form, the, the complaint forms and uh, they wouldn't do that. In fact, the lawyers would tell me that they are not prepared to do that and uh, I would ask why. They say, well, we practice in this court and we don't want to be victimized by judges that we lay complaints against. And when these judgments accumulated, I decided to be a bold and refer complaint myself as JP of the division. And I, I had consulted the two DJPs at the time. Um, and one DJP was against me becoming a complainant. He says, you can't do that. I said, no, I have a responsibility to the litigants of this division. 
I'm going to refer a complaint. Simply because mostly the lawyers wouldn't do. And I think that there are a few examples in this matter where complaints were actually sent to the JSC on my prompting by the parties. JP, I want you to look at, having said that, I want you to look at, at the documents in front of tab I. It starts at page 27 in the bundle. It's, it's an affidavit by a gentleman, Colin Sibusiso in Corsi. Do you have that document? It's in the same bundle, JP? Yes. In front I've of got it. I. Do you have yes, that document in front I've of you? I've got it, yeah. So, maybe for the benefit of the tribunal, so the, this, the series of, of documents here, it's from page 27 to page 40, to page 41. It, it deals with the matter of Inkosi versus Rav which is case six in, in part A of the, of the terms of reference. Yeah. So the context here, JP, is, is, a, is a complaint filed with the JSC, and we have the affidavit of, of Mr. Nkosi, as, as well as correspondence as, as well. Yeah. So I want to start with, with Mr. Nkosi's affidavit on page 27, um, just to highlight in the first paragraph. Huh? Yeah. He makes the point that the matter was called on the 8th of April 2013 and, and allocated to, to Judge Marmela. He makes that point in paragraph 1. Yes. Then he states in paragraph 3, the duration of the trial was for one day. The parties concluded argument in that time. And at the end of the trial, uh, they were informed that judgment was reserved and that judgment would be handed down sometime during June 2013. That's at paragraph 3 yes. of his affidavit. I'll, I'll come back to his affidavit later. I want to go to the correspondence because there's a series of correspondence, uh, but there's, the, the, there's one matter in particular I want to, to draw your attention to. Because in the correspondence, and I'm not going to go through the entire co sequence. I, th I think, if you don't mind, I know you're my evidence leader, but I think what this affidavit shows is the real problems encountered by litigants when judges don't write the judgment they expect from them. Mm. I think that's what this affidavit sets out if you read, if you read further. I just want yeah. that to be no, JP, understood. I'm, I'm going to come back to paragraph okay. seven. I want you to comment on paragraph seven. Yes. Um, maybe we should do so now. Maybe we should do so now. I want to deal with the correspondence. Maybe we should deal with, with, with paragraph seven. Yeah. Um, in, in paragraph seven, Mr. Nkosi sets out in his affidavit the, the prejudice he suffered. And maybe just for the benefit, uh, just to read that, it's pa page 28 of the tribunal bundle, paragraph 7. Mr. Nkosi says, The accident has impacted on my life socially, academically, and financially. The delay in the judgment has also resulted in me not receiving the treatment needed as I, as I cannot afford it. And same was agreed to be paid for by the road accident fund. But the fact that the matter has not been finalized, the road accident fund has not issued the undertaking for future medical expenses. Yeah, yeah the, the, the complainant laments the situation he finds himself in. Yes. Do you, do you wish to comment on that, JP? Well, it's one of the reasons I took it upon myself as JP of the division, that litigants in the division shouldn't be exposed to these types of problems as a result of judgments not being written by the judges involved in those matters. Uh, because this is it's a, it's a source of embarrassment for me as a, as a JP that early litigant would be exposed to this type of problem. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this judgment took, it was a one day, judge, one day trial, took something like four years, if I'm not mistaken. I'll, I'll come to that now, JP. Yes. Just, just in terms of the sequence of the, of the documents, as I said, I'm not going to go through all the documents because the, the attorney's right to judge Marmela. Yes. Uh, that's at pages 30 onwards. But then yeah. at page 34, there's a letter from Judge Ledwaba where he escalates this matter to your, to your office. In yeah. other words, the attorneys have complained. They've written to Judge Ledwaba. Just for a complete the second, page 33, yeah. the attorneys um, write to Judge Ledwaba, highlighting the fact that they're still waiting for the, the judgment. Page 34, Judge Ledwaba informs the attorneys that the matter is being escalated to your office. Yes. That's at page 34. Yes. Then if you go to page 38, JP, of that series of, 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 of correspondence, 
This is a letter dated the 6th of November, 2014. And the content says, the judge president has received a response from Judge Maumela, who has undertaken to deliver the judgment in the subject matter on 18 November, 2014. The judge's clerk will communicate with the parties to provide more details on the time for the delivery and other related matters. Yeah. Now, normally when your office issues a communication of that nature, the premise is there must have been some engagement. Yes, I would have engaged the judge and the judge would have said to me, because I, I usually say, tell me when do you think you'd be able to hand down the judgment? And the judge would give the indication. And then I would then add my own week or two to that period to the parties to, just to give the judge more time. So there was some engagement with Judge Maumela. So, so, so the, the, well, the, the attorney is now informed judgment is to be expected on the 18th of November. So yes. if, if you turn the page, JP, to page 39, the attorney yes. writes, writes back to your office. Yeah. Um, and maybe just for complete the sake, I'll, I'll read the first four paragraphs. So it reads, our advocate Schroeder was informed of the Honorable Judge Mamela's undertakings to deliver judgment on 18 November 2014. Advocate Schroeder was reserved to attend court today. As per your letter, we have not been informed by Judge Mamela's clerk as to the time during which the judge was handed down. Upon telephonic inquiry this morning, we were told by Mr. Kosana Kitsane that she was not aware of any judgment to be handed down. We were informed that Judge Mamela is attending to criminal matters in Palm Ridge. And they say that under the circumstances, they are confused as to the arrangements. So clearly the essence of the letter is they were ready they present, to present themselves and the, the judgment was not delivered. The judge yes. was not available to deliver the judgment. Yes. The judge was uh, seized elsewhere. Yes, the judgment was not handed down that day. And and as you can see, it's, 20, it's 2014, and uh, the judgment was reserved in June 2013, I think. So, so JP, I'm not going to refer you to that, but for purposes of the record, there's a reference in the 2015 bundle at pages 94 and 95. It's a letter in response to a request from your office that the job, your bare attorneys wrote to you yeah. on the 8th of February 2024, in which they inform you that judgment and a court order was received on 28 may 20, 2019 yeah so that's a 20, 2013 one day civil trial matter 2013 to 2019 yeah so that document's not in front of you but for reference purposes it's pages 94 95 of the 2015 bundle yes where the attorneys bring that to your attention so, so. You've said now, JP, it was a one-day matter five years later. Um, what, what, do you, what is your view? Are you able to comment on the delay and, and the failure? Firstly, the, the, the delay, but also the failure to meet the commitment made by you and your office to, to the attorneys and to the client, huh? their client. Huh? Well, it's part of these issues that I says a uh, source of embarrassment. I've put my word to them to say they can expect judgment on a particular date. It didn't come that day. It only came years later. And uh, if one looks at the issues involved in that matter, it was not a complex matter at all. Mm. I can't remember how many pages that judgment was, but uh, that uh, buttresses my view that yeah. it was not a complex matter that would have justified that length of time to be reserved. Uh, JP, it is uh, Judge Peter's indulgence. There is a bundle of, of cases. I just need to make a. I have one missing. I just want to take a photo of the page so I can use my photo, phone just to reference the where it is in the in the sequence of documents. JP, you refer to the judgment. Yeah. There, there's there's a bundle in front of you. It's at um, number eleven. May I approach just to hand it? So, so JP, the the Kosi matter that you refer to is 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 at tab eleven. Yes, I've got it. Uh, and and once again, it's in front of the tab, not not not, not behind. Huh? Yeah. 
so so that copy of the judgment jp if, if you have if you have a look at it um it, that that version is not signed and so, so i'm not i'm not certain if it was if it was if it was handed down but it, it is it is available on safely and if necessary you can provide the link um to the tribunal as well yeah just in terms of the the issues in the judgment jp do you do you wish to express a view yeah as i said um, i think i looked at this judgment earlier to set to can understand why you would have taken the judge so long um i mean in paragraph seven the judge says what is the issue the issue is uh, future earnings right the court mm. has to determine that mm. right um and then he deals with it and then he looks at the evidence and it's one of one of the things that you'll see in this judgment is the judge has a penchant to quote long tracks from other judgments that he's referring to in his judgment i mean if you look at page 33 page 30 yeah page 33 uh, he does that and then um if that was the issue really i asked myself why did it take the judge four years to write that judgment yeah from the 8th of april 2013 to to the 25th 28th of may 2019 yes mm -hmm. so jp if we can move move to to a, another document in in the series in front of you this is at at tab j the document in front of tab j it's page 66 of the 2015 uh, bundle that's the number of the of the document it's it's a letter from verda furi kruger attorneys and so this is a this is a this is a a letter written to the jsc jp just for context so clearly there's been engagement with the jsc in, re in relation to a complaint in the matter of jc furi nominee officio versus the city of tswane and so the attorney then writes on the 18th of November, 2015. Yeah, what page are you at? Sorry. It's page 66, JP. It's a single page. It's okay, a tab. I've got it. Yes, yes I've got tab. It. Yeah. So just for complete sake, I'm going to read to you the contents of the letter and then ask you just to reflect on, on, on that. So it's addressed to the Secretariat of the JSC. They refer to the email of the 16th instant, explaining the mistake. They accept the same. But here's the important parts. A very long outstanding and reserved judgment was eventually delivered according to the court order forwarded to you. The applicant has requested us to add to this matter. The fact that due to the delay in the hand down of the judgment, the applicant has suffered uncoverable loss in the rental income and other expenses of in excess of 450,000 Rand in total. Furthermore, our client is of the opinion that fair judiciary did not take place in this matter. The applicant has no further interest in the complaint and kindly inform us of the final outcome. So, so firstly, they set out the prejudice to the client, yes. but, but more importantly, JP, they intimate that they're actually walking away from the process. Right? Yeah. Given, given the delays, mm -hmm. what, do, you wish to, do you wish to comment on that? What is your view on that? Sir? Well, it's something that I'm confronted with uh, generally especially when it relates to judgments that are reserved to say what's the point of bringing cases to court if we're going to wait and wait and wait until the issues become academic you know until we lose interest whether we'll ever get any assistance so i mean it's another source of embarrassment to me when a litigant in the division writes like this JP, then can I take you back to, to tab H? It's, it's, another, it's another complaint to the JSC. It's the documents in front of, of tab H. It starts at page six. It's a complaint filed by Mr. Smallberger. It's a complaint against Josma Mela. And this is a complaint that was filed in 2015. So there's a there's a there's a series of there's an affidavit and then also a series of, of, of correspondence as part of that complaint. Yes. But but I want to take you to JP to page eight, which is the the start of of, of the affidavit. Huh? Yeah. As I say, this is in relation to the complaint that's been filed. 
um, with the JSC. If you turn the page to, to page, maybe, maybe just for, for the record, so, so the matter is a matter of um, Moretele, a local municipality, is the applicant, and Tirmac PTY Limited is the respondent. And Mr. Mr. Smallberger is the attorney for, for the respondent. If you go to page nine of the, of the affidavit, JP, if you look at pa paragraphs four and five, um, I'll just read paragraph four to you. Uh, the, this application was heard by the Honorable Judge Mamela on 29 October 2013 under case number 62887 of 2011. On the date of the application, Honorable Judge reserve judgment. The judge indicated that judgment will be handed down on Friday, the 1st of November 2013, and we briefed advocate on the matter to note the judgment. We have received no further communication. Sorry, we however received a further communication from the court that the judgment was going to be handed down on Thursday, 31 October 2013 at 1400 hours. And we instructed an attorney to know the judgment. On the 31st, we received notice the judgment will in fact now be handed down on the 4th of December 2013. They once more briefed an advocate to know the judgment. Shortly before the 4th, and we would be informed at a later stage when judgment would be handed down. And of course, then he, he sets out you know, further endeavors to engage. So this is an affidavit on the 20th of March, 2015. So just your comment on that, that sequence of events. The attorney complains that they are informed that the judgment is going to be ready on a certain date. They prepare, they, they, they engage counsel, and then they are informed, no, it's not ready, and then, and then there's, there's a delay. And he, and he sets out a series. I think of this examples. is one of those instances where people say they've lost faith in their justice system. If they are told when the judgment would come, it doesn't come, and they are given more occasions like that, then the, judge, the judge, judgment does not come. Uh, it leads to that attitude on litigants. And as JP of the division, I feel embarrassed that it happened under my watch. JP, so, so Mr. Spalberger says they when the matter was reserved, in other words, in October 20, 2013. Yeah. Now, it's not in front of you, but just for, for reference purposes, it's, it's part of the of the tribunal uh, record. Uh, it's pages eighty two to one hundred and four in the twenty fifteen bundle. It's it's an affidavit Mr. Smallberger filed in twenty twenty three. Yeah. The importance of of that affidavit, JP, is it, it makes the point in the affidavit that judgment was handed down on the twenty seventh of December twenty eighteen. Five years later. Yeah. So the reference for the tribunal's benefit, it's, it's in paragraph 8 on page 83 of Mr. Smallberger's affidavit, where he, 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 he states that the date the judgment was, was, was handed down. Uh, JP, the judgment is also at, at uh, tab 9 in front of you, in, in the bundle. It's, it's a nine-page judgment. Yes, I was going to make that point. That, that's a nine-page judgment that took five years to write. And the issues involved, I mean, the length of the judgment tells you that there was very little exacting legal principles at play there. And it's a matter that should not have taken five years, but it did. Yeah. And, and, and for fear of asking you the same question all the time, I mean, once again, your, your, your sentiments yes. um, with, with, with such a delay and, and the reflection on, on the bench that you lead. Huh? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, look, that's why I felt more fortified at writing the complaint and becoming a complainant. I've been criticized roundly by judges nationally that I'm a trigger-happy JP. But I'm, I feel justified that it's one of my duties to ensure that judges do their work, which they signed up and took an oath to do. And just maybe one one final series in terms of of, of, of the complaints and, and, and in that same batch at, at tab K JP um, it's it's an affidavit by an attorney uh, Mr Van Dijk it's in relation to the matter of R J Cook this is MEC of Health which is one of the matters in the in the tribunal record. And that, that affidavit starts at page 97 to yes. 104 of, of the tribunal record. Yeah. 
I want to refer you specifically, JP, maybe just for context again. So Mr. Van Dijk mentions why he's deposing to the affidavit. Uh, it has been requested by the evidence leader. Uh, he, he places on record his affidavit is not intended to discredit the bench. Uh, he wants to make that point. And he states that he received instructions from Mr. Reginald John Cook to institute action against the MEC for Health regarding a medical negligence claim. That's on the first page of the, of the affidavit. Um, I want to refer you to paragraph five on page 98, JP, of the bundle. So the matter was then heard, this is according to the affidavit, uh, by Judge Marmela from the 14th of August, 2012 to the 17th of August, 2012. Judgment was then reserved. Heads of argument were filed by the parties in October 2015. 2012. Sorry, 2012, I apologize. He says so in paragraph six of the affidavit. And then at, at paragraph seven, um, he, he states that there's been an extensive period um, waiting for the judgment. They wrote to your office. They, they attached the correspondence. Um, then they also set out uh, the reply that they received. The important part really for purposes of the sequence of, of, of the events is paragraph eight, where he says the judgment was eventually handed down on 11 May 2016. Um, that, that's four years later four, and uh, four years the plaintiff later. had died. And that brought in further complications about how they were to quantify the claim. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe just for, for completeness sake, JP, just at, at paragraph 10, I'll need to read that out to you and then and then ask you to comment on that. So the attorney says at paragraph 10 on page 98, due to the unfortunate uh, untimely death, or maybe I should start at paragraph nine, just, 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 just for, 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 for greater, greater context. Paragraph nine, it is of importance, however, to note that the plaintiff unfortunately passed on on 11 August, 2014, even before judgment was handed down. Of course, then he talks about the uh, master's letter of authority appointing the daughter to, to attend to the matter. The last sentence in that paragraph, the plaintiff unfortunately never saw judgment two years along the line after judgment was reserved. Paragraph 10, due to the unfortunate untimely death of the plaintiff and the difficulty now to prove the late plaintiff's quantum, quantum is still not resolved. The matter has now been set down for trial in 15 March 2027 to try and come to a meaningful end in this unfortunate delay in handing down judgment. It's further yes, yes. Um, illustration uh, of why I say people lose faith in the justice system when events like this happen. And I had no inclination from the judge why he wasn't writing this judgment. So, so as, as you sit there today, JP, do you, do you have a sense on, on part A of the, the 2015 complaint, yes. the 38 judgments that are listed there, and, and yes. we'll... we'll We'll eventually settle between myself and the response legal team. We'll settle that list and make it, and bring it as up to date as possible. Yes. But but do you have any any sense of of, of why any of those judgments were delayed? Huh? No. I mean that's why I lodged a complaint of gross incompetence or gross misconduct. Um, other than him telling me his laptop had crashed, and I know when we discussed that I have some knowledge of IT. And I asked whether he'd involved uh, uh, the IT personnel at the courts to assist him. Um, but that was the end of it. I never got to hear whether um, he was given a new laptop, whether he recovered lost work or whatever. But uh, it's one of those periods where the judge just vanishes. Things just continue happening. He keeps reserving judgments, not writing them. And it's, it's what made me write the complaint. Because I was at the end of my tether. I must protect litigants in the division. JP, you sp you've spoken about, um, oh, we refer to the example of, of the 18th of November 2014 when you yes. had made arrangements and the judge wasn't there. Um, we've also referred to some of the correspondence where, where arrangements were made for judgments to be handed down and it didn't happen. Yes. Are, are you aware of any other examples? Where there were challenges with, with Judge Mambela not being at court, when he was supposed to be at court. I, I mentioned earlier that he is one of the permanent judges who used to postpone his part-head criminal trials to recess. 
I've had a few occasions where he would have done that. In one instance, I called him because everyone was waiting for him during recess. And then I get a call, say, JP, all the parties are in court. The judge is not there. Where is the judge? So I called him and I asked him, do you know this matter? Says so there's another but parties are waiting for you. He was in Venda. One of the advocates in that matter had flown from Cape Town. It was not the only incident. That I think I can mention about three, where he would postpone matters to recess, but then not show up. And and did you did you issue any directives to him after after this had happened, where he was was not where he was meant to be, in in terms of when when he should sit sit matters down. And, and well, the directive of the division is matters that go to recess are from acting judges because acting judges would not be appointed for the following term. That's why they have to finalize their matters during recess. But the, the permanent judge is there forever. And uh, I mean, Judge Maumela is one of those judges who always has a number of parted trials next to his name, right, from term to term. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I made that point when I was requested to comment on whether he should be suspended or not. I said, well, I put it in, I put him in the criminal trial role because there's less harm in the sense that no, not many reserve judgments are reserved there unless he's sitting in the appeals, but very little. But uh, because of his slow finalization rate, I said it doesn't help for him to stay. And that's why I recommended that he be suspended. JP, moving off, off that, th that theme, um, you, you made a point generally uh, earlier that you, you, for, the, for, the, for part A, you, you don't know, that you don't have any reason why those judgments were delayed. Huh? No. Uh, insofar as the latter part of, 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 of the complaint is concerned, uh, you, you've provided some records of, of sick leave. Huh? Um, which is, which is also in the tab in front of in front of you. Um, if we go to the documents at, at tab E, in front of tab E, it's page 362 of the tribunal bundle, the 2020 bundle. Yes. It says, um, it's, it's, it's the, head, the heading, it's, it's Judge Marmela, request for sick leave, request for temporary incapacitation. So there, there, there are two dates under A, under sick leave. It's March uh, 23rd, 2023, and then May to June 2023. Are, are those the only records that you have of, of, for sick leave of, for yes. Judge Maumela? Yes. I mean, as you'd seen in my email to him when he was saying he's been ill, has had health challenges for a long time, I said, I'm surprised I'm aware of court. Yeah, we, we, I'll, I'll get to that now, JP. Sure. So that that is correct in terms of my records. And so so the documents at, at tab E just deals with the sick leave. You, you're referring to your email now, JP. That's that's at the next tab. Yeah. That's at, at tab F, starting at page 365. So just, just for context, so 365, it's an email dated the 3rd of May, 2023. It's addressed to you from Judge Maumela. It reads, Dear JP, request to be released on account of illness. Please find you with my letter regarding a request to retire. So that's the, the cover of the, of the email. Yes. And then the next page, page 366. Uh, and, and I won't go into the detail of, of, of what is what is what is what is set out in, in the letter, but it, it, essentially it's a, it's a request to be released on the account of ill health, which Judge Mamela yes. sends to you, yes. and which was which was emailed to you on the third of May. Um, well, he says there he has been unwell for a number of years from 2016. Yes. His health started to to be a bigger challenge. Yeah, uh, we won't go into the details, yeah. JP, of, of the illness, but I mean, he, 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 he motivates the, in that letter why yes. he says to you, you should be, to be released. Huh? Yes. Um, you then respond on page 367, which is the next page, you, 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 write, you write back um, to Judge Marmela, and maybe just for the purpose of the, of the record, I'll, I'll, I'll read that email to you, JP. So you, you address the judge by his first name, 
Uh, you write, I've noted your request to be allowed to retire for health reasons. You were appointed permanently on 30 January 2012, and your normal retirement date is 24 May 2029. For you to be released before that date, and for medical reasons, more information is required. As you mentioned that your request is based on your health status, a substantive medical report is required. Without this report, your request will not be considered by the Ministry. The next paragraph, I think this is the point you were making earlier, JP. Next paragraph, I must say I was surprised to read from your email that you have been experiencing health challenges. You have never informed me as your head of court of these challenges, and I wonder why as many judges have approached me with their medical and health challenges, I've been able to assist them by motivating the Ministry to give them time off all the requests were backed by appropriate medical reports and records, hence I request you to do the same. Please be assured that I'm available to assist you, but I require a medical report. So on the same day, you responded to, to Judge Marmela's request to be released on, on ill health. Yes. Was there, was there any further engagement after this, 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 this response? From, no, from I received you? nothing further. So no, no response to the, to the email, no, no application for you to consider substantiated by medical reports? Huh? No. I mean, if I recall well, <coughs> the, the further request was for him to be temporarily given medical leave when he was busy with the, the trial that's known as the Senzo Mayor trial. Are you referring that, to that was not permanent. Yes, I mean, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So yes. just to, for him to be released for some time. Yeah. You're referring to the medical report of, of June, I think, 2020, yes. Dr. Lumu. Yes, Dr. Lumu. Yes. yes. Maybe just just for 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 for, for, for purposes of of the, of of the record and to clarify, if you go back to page 362, JP. Yes. I think you 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 list that uh, under under B. Yes. Yes. A request for temporary medical boarding for six months. Yeah. A request made medical report Dr. Lumo dated the eighth of June twenty twenty three. Yeah. So that, that document is before is before the tribunal. Yes. We don't need to go there. Yes. So that's what you're referring to when you talk about the yeah. the application for temporary incapacity. Well, I mean if it was indeed correct that he was so medically incapacitated, I would see no problem why. Um such a medical report would have been provided to me to 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 provide to the minister for him to be boarded medical. I've been involved in the medical boarding of a number of judges in the division, probably four or five from the top of my head. So when I wrote that email to him, I knew what I was talking about. Just, I'm, I'm approaching the end of my evidence, but there's one aspect I just want to clarify with the JP. If I could ask for a short indulgence, just to grant me a short adjournment eh, before we, we continue. Five minutes would be enough. Eh? We shall adjourn for five minutes.
Yes, Mr. Mop. Thank you, Justice Doctor. Thank you for the indulgence. Judge President Lumbo, we, we know the tribunal is, is, is has to inquire whether the, the delays in the handing on the judgment were occasioned by gross misconduct, gross incompetence, or, or incapacity. That's, that's the, the brief to the tribunal. Uh, having regard to your evidence, um, various references to the correspondence, the impression it, it left uh, with you that you've shared and you referred to some of the judgments. How would you characterize Judge Marmela's conduct if one has regard to the terms of reference, the various delays, the <coughs> fact that for part A you say you don't, you don't know why the judgments were delayed, how would you, in trying to assist the tribunal, how would you characterize Judge Momela's conduct? Um, I would say up front that he had made, he has made himself guilty of gross incompetence. Gross incompetence in the sense that, and I use that when I look at some of the judgments he has, he failed, he took time. Uh, we, we dealt with one which took five years. We dealt with one which took four years. But there are others where he was a senior judge. I mean, there's one judgment where acting judge Moncho was the scribe. That's who Judge Maomela allocated the scribe duties to. That judgment also took a long time. As the senior judge, it is his responsibility to make sure that these judgments come out quickly because there are a number of instances where acting judge, he would allocate to acting judges scribe duties and they would send him the drafts and it would take a long time for him to come back. But this one, it took a long time. Now, just, just for benefit of the tribunal, you're referring to case number 24 on, on Part A is term of reference, the Mtumkulu matter. Yes. That matter took a long time, that judgment to be to be handed down. And uh, he would have been expected as a senior judge to supervise the acting judge that that judgment comes out quickly. But there are other judgments. I'm talking about why I say gross incompetence. A leave to appeal matter. It's regarded as an urgent matter, in principle. We've got instances there where he reserved a leave to appeal judgment for longer than a year. Um, JP, are, are you referring to, if you, if you look at the bundle of judgments at yes. tab three, yes. which is case number five on, on part B of the terms of reference, Mulaudzi, this is the master. Yes. Tab three, JP, can you see, is, is that the matter that you're referring to? Yes, that was a leave to appeal matter. So it's in front of tab three again, yes, JP. Yes, I can see it, yeah. yeah. Leave to appeal. Um, it took Judge Maumela more than a year to come with his judgment. So it was reserved on the 70th of September 2018, yeah. delivered in October 2020, 24 months later. Yeah. Uh, it's a tab, tab three of the, in front of tab, tab three, Judge Davis, the bundle that you have, huh? in front of tab three. Uh, so it's case number five on pod, okay, okay. Thank, thank you, sir. I mean, 24 months to deliver a leave to appeal judgment. Um, so I don't want to go through all of these examples. I'm just saying that's what fortifies my view, that he's made himself guilty of gross incompetence, clearly incompetent. And when you look at the quality of those judgments, I mean, there's that nine-page judgment that we spoke about, which took him four to five years to write and uh, the issues involved are not issues that would justify that length of time for the judgment to be written. Mm -hmm. But I think the additional factor that one may also consider that uh, 
could lead to a, a finding of gross misconduct is he just didn't tell me why he was reserving these judgments for this long. Didn't tell me. I would write to him, he would not respond. Now and then he'd respond. He would give dates when the judgments would be handed down and he would not hand down those judgments on those dates. I think that leads to probably gross misconduct because you're misleading the public. You say you'll get a judgment on this date and when that date comes, no, the judgment's not ready. And after that date, it takes another two years for the judgment to come. So th that's my view. But uh, just going back, I maintain Judge Maumela was never overloaded. He actually received light work in comparison to people who do civil work on an ongoing basis, where you would get one agent court allocation, one special motion allocation, and one opposed motion allocation per term. Because those are the areas that breed reserve judgments. And uh, I would therefore not entrust him with any of the work areas that would breed reserve judgments. And uh, that's why I say it was light work. And uh, perhaps I need to mention this, that, and it's a question that I've had to deal with, and probably this is a platform I can use to provide my explanation. You would know that uh, Judge Maumela was the first trial judge in this matter, so-called Senso Mayor trial. A lot of people asked me why I allocated that matter to him. There are views that have been expressed that he was struggling to run that trial properly, correctly. And uh, I want to tell this commission, this tribunal that as part of my view that he should not be given work that would be onerous for him. When met criminal matters come to the division, they don't go to the trial role, they go to the pre-trial role. And when they're in the pre-trial role, they're allocated to judge, judges randomly. And this matter was allocated to Judge Maumela to case manage until it was trial ready. DJP, who's more operational, told me that he had been informed by Judge DeVos, who's in charge of the criminal trials, that the Senzo Mayor trial was being case managed by Judge Maumela. And there's a reason why he told us, because we had to decide who we allocate that trial to. And me and the DJP, we agreed that he was not to do that trial. And that once he had case managed it to trial ready status, he was to revert to us so that we could decide who we allocate that matter to. That never happened. Once he finished case managing that matter, he decided to go straight and hear the evidence. By that time, the horse had bolted. We couldn't say, but you shouldn't have started this matter. And uh, it, 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 it's a source of environment. Even the CJ called me one of those instances. I mean, there was an allegation that he was drinking tea during the trial. I called him and he said, no, he's got a medical condition where he's got to drink a warm liquid all the time. That's the explanation Judge Maumela gave me. But I'm just saying this matter was in the spotlight. And uh, when eventually uh, his health condition was given to us as a reason why he couldn't continue with that matter. We had to make sure that we replace him in that matter. But he was never meant to hear that matter from Dago. That fortifies my view that he had demonstrated to me as his head of court that he was prone to being incompetent. And that's why I continue to say he's made himself guilty of gross incompetence. And, and that reference to that example, JP, I, I also highlighting it, highlighting it due to the fact that he didn't comply with the directive that he should not deal with the matter. Yes, yes. DJP Lidwaba can be called 
because he specifically told him that you are not to hear that trial. Once it's ready, tell us so that we can allocate it further. That didn't happen. JP, number, Judge Mamela is, is, I think, uh, the 10th most senior judge in, 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 the, in the Pretoria bench. Huh? Would it be fair to say that you would be familiar with your leadership style, your open door policy, the fact that you're approachable? No, he's higher than 10. He's in the top 10 and higher up in the top 10. So he's a senior judge. That's why in all the full court matters, he would sit in, he would be the presider, right? So he would be more familiar with my directives, with my leadership style and how I assist judges. And what really pains me, uh, which is why we're sitting here, is I still don't know why he reserved these judgments for so long. The health reason came now in 2023. It's never been raised before that I can't write because I'm sick or I've got these challenges. And, and as a senior judge in your division, how would you describe your professional relationship with Judge Mamela? Huh? Oh, we got along. Okay, we've never fought. Um, it's one of my judges. I made sure that uh, I reach out to them now and then. And we have judges meetings every time. Where, and those are judges meetings involving only permanent judges. Where it's, I would say it's a no-holds-barred meeting where judges bring to the table whatever is a problem to them. And he attended a number of those meetings as well. Jeffy, we, 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 we're almost at the, at the end of your evidence, and you, you've, made, you've made several remarks about uh, the impact of, of the delays and, and, and your sentiments just generally. But maybe just, just in, in, in closing, if you can, can sum up the impact of the delays, the limitations of the various um, complainants that, 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 um, that we highlighted. Just your sense of, of the consequences for the, for the judiciary in these matters and, and your perspective on, on the damage suffered by, by you, the, your bench, your high court, the court that you lead, but also the, the judiciary more broadly speaking, and just the consequences for, for the establishment, if, if, if you may. Yeah, I think um, I've said it before and I'll say it now, that when litigants wait for judgments that to take a very long time to come, it becomes an ineffective resort to the justice system. That means the justice system is ineffectual. It's non-functional. It's not working. And that's why judgments have to be uh, handed down expeditiously. I mean, writing judgments, it's a constitutional injunction on judges. If you issue an order, tell the party who's losing or winning why they are losing or winning. Give them reasons. Don't delay. It must be expeditious. It's our existential reason as judges to resolve legal disputes. And we, if we don't do that, we're failing. And uh, that creates serious problems for people's confidence in the justice system, eventually in the rule of law. So my view is... Uh, it's what fortified me to lodge this complaint against Judge Maumela, to say he's really failing. He's creating disrepute for the division, for the judiciary, and the JSC must take steps to discipline him. And that's in a way to protect the litigating public. They should have confidence that when they bring cases to the division, the division will process those judgments expeditiously and life goes on. I mean, that plaintiff who died, whose matter is still waiting for 2027. And that's a courtesy of the congested roles that we have in the division. It's a matter that started before 2020. It's going to be finalized 2027. He's no longer alive. Judge President, those are my questions. Is there anything else that you wish to, to add? No, I think I've said what I wanted to say. I don't enjoy sitting here, I've been saying. Judges are my colleagues, but my duty as a JP is to make sure that when a judge doesn't pull his weight, I must take the necessary steps to make sure that the situation is corrected. 
And that's why I lodged a complaint against Judge Maumel. Thank you, sir. Judge, Judge uh, Jafta, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mob. Uh, Mr. Badella, uh, uh, do you have any questions for the Judge President? If you it, 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 don't it, have any, we will understand. And uh, indeed, we do have the questions. Uh, but however, I would appreciate if we could be given an opportunity to consolidate the issues that we're going to put in cross-examination uh, in, uh, in line with the evidence that has been laid, if we could be given an, an indulgence to be able to do that. Uh, how it, long would you need? I was suggesting 20, but I'm told 30 at, at most. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh, can we take an early lunch adjournment then? Use the 30 minutes. Well, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to cover that and try to come back at, uh, at 1.30. At 1.30. Uh, the only constraint, Judge, is, uh, is that uh, obviously that means then we wouldn't be able to have any lunch. No, Maybe. but but if you 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 would have thirty minutes lunch, do oh. you need more than thirty minutes? No, 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 no. That's fine. That's just, that's, <laughs> exactly. Just this. No, that, then that means we can resume at one thirty. Okay. All right. We will take an early lunch adjournment and uh, come back at half past one. Um, Judge President, um, you would be required to be back at half past one. Thank you.
Um, thank you, JP. We are about to start. When we adjourned, uh, Mr. Badela uh, was to commence his uh, cross examination. Mr. Badela, are you ready? Thank you. Good afternoon, JP. Good afternoon, Advocate Badela. Thank you, thank you. As you are aware that uh, we are not in a process like in an adversarial uh, court courtroom. We are here to assist the tribunal in its investigations. The approach that we have taken and that we are taking is that of highlighting certain issues in order to assist the tribunal, yes. nothing more. You agree with me that the 2015 complaint re re uh, relates only to late delivery, to, to failure to deliver judgments? Both complaints relate to that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's deal. I'll, I'll explain why. If, if one has regard to the complaint that was lodged, yes. it, regards, it pertains to failure to deliver judgments. Yes. If one has regards to the 2020, it, it has got two sections mm. in terms of your affidavit. The first portion is about judgments that were outstanding. The second portion is about judgments that were handed down, albeit late. Yes. That, that draws a, a distinction between the two complaints. If you want to do that, that's fine. Yes. To me, it's the same thing. <laughs> yes. All right. and, and then also, you agree with me that insofar as the 2015 complaints mm. are concerned, those were lodged by the litigants to the Judicial Service Commission. Litigants and myself. I, uh, if you don't mind, then can you highlight in terms of the, the record that we have, where do we find a, a, a complaint that you lodged for the 2015? It's my letter that uh, I think it appears as uh, number four, the letter dated, what's the date of that letter? Yes, may you kindly read what the contents of that letter says? It says, referral of complaints against Judge T. Maumela, failure to hand down judgments. Yes. And this referral, as we know, was based on the forms that were submitted to the JSC by the litigants, isn't it? This was my complaint. Y yes, yes. I referred to the forms by the, 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 the other yes. the litigants, but this was my complaint. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, let's, let's, let us just look at... Uh, the norms and standards. Yes. Yes. Do you agree with me that the norms and standards are a guideline? Yes. Yes. Do, do you also agree that the norms and standards do not provide for a sanction for its breach? No, they don't. Do you then agree with me that and we are refer we're talking specifically about the norms and standards. Do you agree with me that breach of the norms and standards do not constitute a gross misconduct? They constitute a misconduct. Well, I'm um, sure you can argue that. As far as I'm concerned, the norms and standards are a guideline. The operative document is the judicial code of Correct. conduct. That's the one that has punitive measures. Yes, yes, yes. Do you, do you agree with me that the environment generally where the judiciary or the judges find themselves in is stressful? Oh, yes. It's a stressful job. You know that when you apply for the job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And also you agree with me that different people uh, react differently to the stress that they face. Oh, yes. Yes. Unless you want me to explain other things, but uh, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, that's all. Yes, that's fine for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And then also, I just want to put it to you that you highlighted the workloads that 
uh, in particular, Judge Maumela had between 2015 and, 20, and, and uh, 2023. 2012 to 2023, so, yes. yes. Now, what, what I would like to do in conjunction with what uh, Advocate Mop did is to ask you to, to uh, uh, look at a document which I would like to, to introduce to the, to the members of the tribunal. Yes. That was uh, actually prepared by the Judicial Service Commission through Advocate Mop. But that relates to the to the evidence that you have highlighted. Yes. Yes. Uh, Advocate Mop, can I confirm that the, the tribunal has got that? And maybe if you can assist to make sure that each of the tribunal members has the document. Is this the document with court terms and? Yes, that's the one. Okay. It's got just me the Judge Tima Umela okay. at the top. Now, what, what I would like to do is to deal with the issue of the loading. Yes, that's the one. Yes, that's the one. The only thing I have done, instead of having many pages, I've joined them together so that I can follow. Yes. You agree with me? If one, as an example, looks at, at term three of 2012, that is the first slide, it, it demonstrates or shows that the total weeks for term three that Maumela was, uh, J, was uh, allocated matters in various courts amounted to nine weeks? Well, I don't know what else you are looking at, but uh, I'll, I'll agree. He says it's, it's based, page three. No, no, it's page if three. it's based on what yeah. Judge, uh, yeah. what Advocate Mob said, yeah, because yeah. I don't see the indication of nine weeks here. Yes, maybe get, I don't see it. Can you approach and just show me? Mr. Badela, how are we meant to read these these documents? Right. It may be out of sequence, but I don't see nine. Yes, I think maybe the, the issue. Either. We've yes. got to stick ours the, together. The, the, the well. reason why I've done, I've just made sure that I, I piece it up so that it reads to the full extent, and I'm then able to. You, you, yes. yes, it gives the total. Yes. Yeah. B yes. 212012, and you go right to the end. Yes. Total weeks, nine weeks. The next column is re short recess. That's correct. That's, I think, what you're telling us. That's what. That's what. And I'm then, saying. unsurprisingly, right down, it's eight, nine, or ten weeks. Yes. Because terms are what. I've learned to always change. Yes, correct, yeah. correct. That's what you. That's what I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, I must be can wrong. I can I try and assist as well, maybe to, to facilitate the reading. If the tribunal can have regard to page 354, that sets out the work allocation over the period, and then only look at, at the last page where it talks about the, the loading. I think that will facilitate it. You only need the two, the two documents. Uh, that is behind tab D. No, I'm sorry, in front of tab D. Thank you very much. Sorry, what's mm. the difference now? It's the same. Uh, uh, just as I'm saying, it's, a, it's an easy read. Instead of having six pages, you only need two pages then. So, well, no, because the problem here, as I understand, is uh, these are terms yes. you're dealing with now. Not, not the, uh, I would draw my suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm right. What I'm yeah, trying to you're say right, is Judge, yes. what you're asking us to do, if yeah. I could just cut to the trace, yes. is if I look at term 3, 2012, Cut, yes. on page 1, yes. and I then cast my eye to the penultimate page, yes. the, uh, I will have a total, there it will have criminal appeal, civil appeal, full a court appeal, urgent court, tax court, total weeks. Correct. And you're asking me to look at the total weeks. That's correct. Yeah, because okay. that, that's where, that's, that's what. Uh, and I think that's what you're asking the judge. That's exactly, yes, that's what Thank I'm you. asking. Yes. Uh, does the member, all Thank members. You. Are, I found it. Yeah. Are we, you're not yeah. more co computer literate than I am. So <laughs> I'm quite I'm, sure looking, you know. I'm looking at hard documents. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You see, the, the, judge pres <laughs> the judge president introduced the court uh, uh, case lines. I mean, it should be <laughs> IT serving. <laughs> yes. Yeah, purely what, what I want to see. So are you there, Judge? Uh, yes, President? you say nine weeks. Yes, I yes. confirm that. Yes. Then, I mean, uh, I just used that one example. Mm. If then you, you scroll down, you yes. would uh, 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 see that almost in all those terms, yes. it's either eight, ten, nine, eleven, 
and, and, and the rest. Yes. Do you agree with me that this is an indication of how loaded Judge Maumela was during all the terms in question? Well, the, the nine or ten weeks is the normal number of weeks in a yes. term. Yes. So when you say loaded, that's a different statement. Okay, because, let, me uh, let, let, let me put up a proposition to you. Yes. If we look as an example mm. at the second line, term for 2012, yeah. Maumela J was allocated a criminal matters for one week. Which uh, year is it? Which term? Tw term for 2012. Well, w on mine, there's no indication of any criminal trial. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, term one, 2013. I mean, okay, yes. yes. Term one, 2013. There's one. Yeah. I just want to so that we can add at the end. Yes. And then you will see and along the same line that he then was allocated a proposed motion for one week. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yes. Yes, two weeks. That's the third line. And then we then see if we go along again, he, he then had civil trials for two weeks. Yes. Then we, we then go along, we see that he got, had civil appeals for one week. Yeah. Then he had urgent court for one week. Yes. Which then highlights that he was in court for 10 weeks. Yes. Yes. And that also, if one has regard of the normal court terms, yeah. you agree with me that he was occupied during the term? Yes. Okay. Now, do, do you agree with me that during recess or during the term yeah. or even during uh, the time when one is in the criminal court, there are other duties that one has to do as a judge. Yes, there are other duties. Yes. And you agree with me that these duties may also impact on the ability to hand down judgments that were reserved? No, I don't know. You, you need to explain that because my view is those duties are Judges sitting in criminal trials, and it's a later in, invention, didn't happen those years, um, also sit in criminal appeals. They also do bail appeals. They also do criminal pre-trials. Yes. yes. And sometimes they deal with petitions. Yes. Yes. And also during this time, they have to after each sitting of the criminal court, yes, review the proceedings of the day. Yes, in review and summarize evidence. and be ready for the next day, yes. Right. yes. Now, in view of the loading that is here, mm. you agree with me, it does indicate that during the term, it makes it hard, not impossible. It makes it hard for one to do what is, is in his plate. Not I don't agree with that. I mean, I the division has more than 85 judges. Yes. And uh, there are a number of interventions. Should you find yourself in a position where you can't write the judgment, you go to the JP and say, hey, I need time to write this judgment, and this is why. Yes. Um, and I mean, I've made the point in previous uh, occasions that when you're sitting in criminal trials, those trials don't run daily. There are days when either witness is not there, legal representative is ill, and that's a free day for the judge to catch up on other things. So if your suggestion is that Judge Maumela was loaded to such an extent that he couldn't do the reserve judgments, uh, I don't agree with you. Yes, but, but before this tribunal, yes. there is no detailed record of uh, uh, some of the issues or the, uh, the work that the judge, Judge Maumela had to do. That, you agree with that? It was, there was a summation based on the experience and what you have, but we have not provided the tribunal with the actual information so that we are able to see what Judge Maumela was actually involved with or was busy with. No, but you've just provided it here. This sheet tells us he was sitting in criminal appeals, civil appeals, yes. full court, agent court. What, what are you talking about that you haven't provided? Yes, yes. Yeah. You will recall that we mentioned you agreed that outside the fact that he was allocated court yes. almost for the full term, yes. 
he still had other duties that yes. he had to do. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. I mean, it's going to be impossible to track all those things. Yes. But you recall that uh, in terms of the norms and standards, or you agree with me that in terms of the norms and standards, it is the head of court yeah. that is responsible for monitoring the performance of the judicial officers. And yeah, yeah. in terms of the norms and standards, the head of court is obliged or rather is uh, advised that he must do this on a daily basis. In other words, there must be a record of how the judge is performing in, his, in, the, in the allocated court. I see. If you're suggesting that there should be a performance management system for judges, then you're barking up the wrong tree. Yes. You do that for employees. A judge is a judge. It's not an employee. A judge has judicial independence. He's qualified. He goes through a rigorous interview process to be appointed. And he's appointed because there's confidence that he'll do his work, whatever it is. So if you're saying the head of court has an obligation to do a performance management system for each judge, I've never seen it. I've never done it. And I challenge you to show me where it's done. I just want to refer you then to the norms and standards. Yes. If, if you have regard to Paragraph six of the norms and standards, in particular subsection three. Yeah. Therein it says the following, and I'm not going to cite the whole paragraph, but where what is relevant. Each head of court shall monitor and evaluate performance of judicial officers serving in his or her court on a daily basis to ensure optimal utilization and productivity. Well, all I can tell you is of and uh, my fellow heads of courts interpret that to monitor court sitting hours, especially for judges doing criminal trials. But as to performance manage each judge on a daily basis, that means that's all I'll be doing for, for the rest of my life, looking at what judges are doing and writing reports and whatever. Our existential basis as judges is to hear and resolve disputes and resolve them through judgments. I think that's my answer. Yes. Now, if, if uh, let's, uh, I think we yeah, will move on. In so far as the work environment in the division. Yes. Yes. Would you hi kindly highlight to the, to, the, to the tribunal as to what it is uh, as the head of court, you have done to enable Maumela J to be able to execute his judicial. I'm saying in general now. Just, okay. Then to, not to, just him. Not to, yeah, okay. just him, not just him. Yes. Okay. When I took over as JP in 2012, I identified a number of areas that were really bad from a uh, work allocation point of view. One of them was the agent court. The agent court had one judge, and that judge from the Friday to the next Friday had to contend with over 60 agent applications, one judge. In fact, it was more, a lot more than that. And I, I targeted that to say, I'm going to put two judges instead of one. Two would be better able to handle that load because the... <laughs> The going line is if you go into the agent court, you've got to smoke something for you to cope. <laughs> I know I've seen judges. Yes, you've seen it. So that's what I did firstly, to put two judges in the agent court. And I changed the Jobeck opposed motion system. Jobeck opposed motion system at the time was opposed motion matters were enrolled on the previous Thursday for the next week. And uh, that gave judges no time to prepare at all. Whereas in Pretoria, judges got their files two weeks before 
the dates on which their opposed motion matters were to be held. I changed and synchronized the system to be the same. So judges get their opposed motion files two weeks before. So they're able, once they're doing other things, to prepare and be ready, right? That's the other thing. The other thing is I stopped allocations on the last week of term. I said judges would not be allocated anything, save those doing urgent matters and uh, those in civil trials, when there are trials running up to there. That is um, the last week yes. of term. And I gave that week to each judge to say, look, use that week to finalize whatever is little that requires finalization. It's your week to do whatever you want to do. And I think I also stopped allocations on Fridays, like opposed motions, I would say, instead of sitting for three days, you sit for two days, Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. And uh, I introduced a system to say, if you have problems, if you have judgments that are taking time and you don't have time because you've got work, talk to me and we'll give you judgment writing time. Now, when you say you have systems or a system, yes, uh, is that something that has been written for the judges to be able to refer to or is it something that you spoke to judges only? No, I spoke to them and uh, they know. You can look at my role, you'll see that uh, there are no allocations on the Friday. No, you no, can, no, no. You no, can no. see that there are two judges in the urgent court, you know. So judges in the division, a senior judge like Judge Mahumela would know that. Now let's, let's come closer then to, to yes. Judge Mahumela then in respect of general enablement for judiciary to be able to do their job. Yes. Now, when you picked up, uh, by the way, maybe let's put it this way first. Yeah, it's better. When you picked up that there are delayed judgments or mm. there, are, there are outstanding judgments generally, uh, what engagements did you have with Maimala with respect to that? No, I called him, like I said, um, regarding the, I think it's the Part A complaints when he was in Toyando, because I'd been writing to him and he's not been, he was not responding. Mm. I even called him, he was not responding, which is why I called Judge Makafula to say, Judge Maumela is there, please get him, get him on the phone to talk. Me. I understand that. I... No, no, no. You asked me what engagement. Yeah, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm still answering. Oh, and still then answering? we spoke. And then we agreed that when he comes back from Toy and comes back to Pretoria, we'll have a meeting. Then he'll have to explain to me what's the story. Because there were a lot of judgments that were outstanding. And he was not responding to correspondence. So he came and that's when he told me that his computer crashed. Right. So that's the engagement I can refer to. Other engagements, um, I don't think I had other engagements because I would write to a judge, and not only Judge Maumela, a lot of judges in the division, I write to them. Okay. Then you say, uh, if, if, if I may make another proposition then in that instant, in terms of, okay, you have indicated that you have a good working relationship with Judge Maumela. Yes. Is there any reason why then Judge Maumela would not respond to your facilitation for engagement? He should tell you that. I don't know why he you did it. Why. Other judges do that. Yes. And uh, uh, you did not, as the head of court also, approach him when you saw that there was not forthcoming uh, response from him in respect of the issue. I mean, in one him. instance, I asked Judge Raulinga, who is very close to him, to mm -hmm. talk to him, to say, look, I have a serious problem with uh, Colin Chifiwa, that's his name, you know, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are close, can you talk to him? And maybe he, you'll understand better why he's not writing his judgments. But as to calling him again, no, nah, I didn't. You didn't. And, and uh, the, 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 one, the gist of my question is that in terms of your responsibilities, yes. uh, that the ones that I've highlighted earlier on, I'm sure you were also receiving stats in terms of the judgments handed down, judgments reserved, and the like. Yes, I get them. I track them um, monthly, but more effectively quarterly. That is every term. I track and I get a report about which judgments are outstanding. Mm -hmm. And if it's just three months, I don't do anything unless parties have written to say we owe the judgment. Then I write to the judge. But I start writing to the judge when it's six months okay. to say 
according to my records, you're owing these judgments. Uh, please confirm this. That's what the, fir the first thing I do. Please confirm that this is in fact is so. And if so, please tell me when you think you'll be able to hand down these judgments. I do that every time. Yes. Now, if, if we look at the 2012 uh, complaint. Yes. Uh, uh, it, the, there was obviously, it, it, there was a complaint, was the complaints were uh, made to the JSC. The question that I would like to, to find out is, these, most of these judgments, as we can see, were reserved between 2012 and 2014 in the main. Yes. As you, as you correctly said. And did that not give you an indication that there, there is something wrong as to why in those particular two years, we've got so many judgments that have been reserved and that have not been handed down? Well, I engaged him, like I said, and he told me his computer crashed. Yes. Okay, we'll come to the computer. Maybe we can deal with the computer crash. Mm. Do you agree with me that uh, when a computer crashes, mm. one is unable to recover the information uh, unless uh, an IT specialist does so. Well, Advocate Badella, you know, when I took over as JP, I realized how backwards the judges in the division were operating instead of physical stuff and the IT stuff. If they wanted to communicate with me, they would send a secretary with a letter, a physical letter. I yes. said, come on, guys. Yes. This is not the Stone Age. I've got an email address. <laughs> I travel a lot. I would be in China, for instance, write me an email. Judge Webinar tested that in Joburg. And I'm told I wasn't here. He wanted something. He got an email within three hours. And he took the letter to the tea room and said, the JP is correct. I wanted this. I wrote him an email. Here's the response. Let's do it. So I'm giving you an example to say, I always want judges, if you do your work, you save your files, make sure you back them up. So that if something happens, your computer is stolen, you don't lose your information. It's only in recent times that the OCJ has introduced what, what is called OneDrive. So you work on OneDrive, the cloud-based storage system. If your computer crashes or the laptop is stolen, you don't lose anything. But if you go back to what I said earlier, simple memory stick, you save your work there, you back it up. If your computer crashes, you still have your stuff. I, this is the, what I used to preach to judges. I, 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 I yes. But the issue then yeah. that, uh, uh, that I've raised in, yeah. in, in, this, in, in this respect is yeah. that at the time, obviously, as we said, not yes. all judges have got the same uh, uh, I would say level of understanding of the IT, yeah. in, most in particular with Judge Mahumela. Mm. And uh, in his instant, as he reported to yourself, he said, my computer has crashed. All I was saying, mm. and I was putting as a proposition to you, yeah. is that when that happens, there is a problem with the uh, recovery of your documents. Yes, I know. That's, but that's, he yes. had a secretary yes, who you could have yes. asked yes. to yes. say, look, you do you my judgments, you're writing them, back them up, or whatever. Yes. But uh, don't blame me I, if I'm he lost blaming, his documents. I'm not blaming he you. knew, uh -huh. he had options yes. at his disposal yes. to make sure that when anything happens, he doesn't lose any information. Yes. And uh, you'd agree with uh, Mamela J when he comes to testify that he, when he says that he did uh, uh, speak to IT, but he didn't get any joy in so far as the recovery of this information, which had crucial uh, uh, work that he had done on the two years that are in question where he had a lot of judgments that were reserved. That's what he will say. Yes. I, when I met him and he told me, I said, have you engaged them? Talk to them and keep me informed of what they are saying and how you are getting on with that. That was the last time he spoke to me. He never came back to me to tell me what IT are telling him and what further challenges he was having. But also, do you agree that Insofar as our court system is concerned, especially in dealing with files, yes, files do get missing sometimes, and <laughs> one is unable to to recoup the information that is contained in the files. They do get missing. That's putting it kindly. They get yes. stolen. <laughs> 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 yes, that's why we are now introducing an electronic storage system. Yes. So that the file 
vanishes. It's still there. With case lines, nothing vanishes. Yes. Now, uh, let's deal with the other question that is related to this. You testify that, uh, you know, uh, at, at some point, Judge Maumera would, uh, would, uh, would promise to uh, hand down judgments at a certain date, but mm. be unable to do that. And we are talking in particular with the 2012, 2013, because they, they, they formed the park. Yes. And also with the incident that happened, I think the, the crashing was in 2014. Mm. or just before then, whichever, yeah. So uh, that uh, when he promised, that's what he's going to say when he comes in, and I'd like to hear what you say is that one of the issues that he had as a problem was that he could not uh, assess the files of the litigants. And in some instances, he would find certain documents missing. Uh, not that he's putting up as an excuse, he's highlighting as a practical hindrance that befell him when he wanted to make sure that he delivered some of the reserve judgments. Well, uh, I can't comment yes. that. Uh, as to what happens in his office, I don't know. I can't comment on that. Yes. But the fact is, yes, parties were promised for yes. judgments on particular dates. Judgments never materialized on those dates. Yes. You, you also testified that uh, Maumela J at some point was found not to be in court. Is, uh, yes. Recall that? Yes. Did you inquire as to why he was not in court? Yes, I called him. One yes. time he told me he was in Toyando. Yes. He'd forgotten that he's, he had a party had met. Yes. All the parties were waiting for him. He yes. wasn't there. But Mamela J would say on that occasion, there was a conflicting schedule that was put upon him because he had to be in, in that court in order to deal with the matter that he was attending to. And yet at the same time, he was then appeared to, uh, he was also to hear another matter locally. Was that never explained to you? No. Judges are in control of when they enroll their apartheid matters. I was not involved. So if there was a conflict, yes. he created the conflict, not me. Because he enrolled the, the apartheid matters himself, not me. Yes. But the other one might have been allocated to him without him uh, actually uh, having created that one. Which other one? The one that was in, in Jobek. Because the, well, part, the part head was in Limpopo. No, the part head was in Pretoria. It was a Pretoria matter where all the advocates were there waiting for him. And he was in Tohoyandu. Just to make it as a classic example in terms of what befell on him. Yes. If you don't mind, can we now address the issue of the Senza Mewa case? Yes. Because it will illustrate some of the challenges that, that sometimes judges face. Mm. Are you aware that Maumela J did not case manage Senza Mewa's case? He, he case managed it. He will testify that he did not. That's fine. Yes. But I've told you. Yeah, you know, no, he and, says, uh, that's why I'm just putting it because you raised this and I'm using it as, a, mm. this, as an illustration. And, and the second thing that, that I would like to put to you is that Maumela J never allocated to himself the Senzo Meua case. What happened in that instant is that a role with uh, the matter being allocated to him was produced not by him. And litigants came to his chambers to say, we are ready for the matter to proceed. He never allocated the matter to himself, as, as, as you gave evidence. Well, you basically suggesting I'm not telling the truth. I am not, Judge. I'm just, I'm no. just highlighting what yeah. he is going to say. OK, that's yes, fine. Yes, yes. Let him say that, but I've told you. Yes. And but, DJ Billy Dwava will be called, because he had the conversation with him to say, you are busy getting this matter to trial ready status. Yes. Once it's ready, tell us so that we can allocate the matter properly. Do I agree with me that the fact that we've got many missing information in the, for the tribunal also creates a problem in the sense that if indeed uh, Judge um, uh, Malumela had uh, uh, allocated to himself uh, the, the matter or had was uh, uh, allocated to do the case management, 
would be seeing that in the record of the court. Is, is there any way in which we can find that and be able to ascertain? Because it's only the record that can tell what actually transpired. That's fine. I can look for those records. I mean, it's easy to track down the daily roles yes. because maybe let me ex explain something that you don't understand. Yes. You see, because we track backlog cases, that is a case that is 12 months on the roll after an accused has pleaded. We don't put a matter that's new on the roll in the trial roll because it needs to be case managed. It needs to be made trial ready. So once it's on the pre-trial role, it's being uh, attended to to get it trial ready. It doesn't. It will never count as a backlog matter because at that time the judge is just involved with the legal rep legal representative to make sure that all documents, all requests, and all arrangements are made to make sure the trial is ready. Once it then gets to the trial role, that's when the accused will plead. That's when the clock starts ticking as to when it starts. And that, that was what we're talking about. To say, once this matter is trial ready, in your view, tell us, and then we will see what we do with the matter. Now, I also just want to, to uh, deal with an issue that uh, you said you were not informed in. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, and also, I'm, I'm contrasting. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Mr. Badella. I... As I understand, the exercise you were undertaking just now was to put to the judge president the version of Judge Maumere. Yeah. Now, you, you, you have left it. You move into another oh. point now. You don't complete that point. You say he says he did not allocate the matter to himself. Yes. But now we are waiting to hear whether you will say Someone else has allocated the matter to him, yes. but we don't get there, or is, is, that, is that deliberate? No, no, it's not deliberate. I thought that it was, I did put a proposition that, that indicates that because that, remember, I, put a, I indicated that litigants came to his chambers to say, we are on the road, we are ready. And, uh, and, and, and then because litigants were there, he couldn't say, no, I'm not in the role, because the role indicated that he is supposed to hear the matter. He then went to court to attend to the matter. So what I was, uh, that's why then my end, in terms of conclusion, I indicated and I put as a proposition to say, not having all the documents is creating a problem for the tribunal to, to investigate or to, to appreciate what actually transpired. But, uh, so, so if I get it right, the version you're putting to the judge president that your client is going to testify is at the end of the case management. I need to get this correct. The matter is ready. The parties are there in his chambers yes. and basically say, let's get on with it, which is what happened. Yes. And he effectively then just continued with the trial or started the trial on the basis that it was trial ready. I'm, I'm trying to yes. understand what the version is because yes. we're going to get terribly confused later yes. about when we get into argument. Yes. So would you just, yes. can you on. just put directly what, what you were just saying yes. so that you give an opportunity? Then? Yes, yes. Uh, the version that Mamara J is going to put, the first one, is that he never case managed says the Mewa case. I've responded to say, yes, he was allocated to case manage that case. Judge DeForce made sure that, uh, and he's the one who told us that we're aware that Judge Maumela is case managing the Senzo Mewa case. I said yes. yes. Further, Judge Maumela would testify that the court role indicated that he was allocated to hear the Senzo Mewa case. No. And thus he attended to that. If the court role indicated that he knew what the instruction was from the DJP, because what just JP Davis put to you is actually what happened. After he finished case managing the case, instead of going back to the DJP and say, the trial is now ready to start, what do you want to do with it? He simply started the trial. Do you agree that if Judge Maumela was not case managing the case, 
he could not have gone and said the case is ready because he was not managing it. The case was before him, Advocate Badella. The reason it was before him in his role was for case management purposes. And then once it got ready, he simply started it. I, I think, Mr. Badella, that's a matter for argument. Yes. The judge president says he did case manage it, and your client says he did not. Yes. So I think, as a matter of fact, we should accept that. Yes. yes. But then the, the issue, though, uh, 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 Chairperson, it would be that whichever version is, there should be a court record that reflects the true version. And that's what I was saying. It should be something that perhaps we provide the tribunal. Could I ask you this? Are you saying there should be a document which reflects that your client was case managing? Correct. Yeah, correct. I'm because interested. When, is there such a document? Well, there should be proceedings. I mean, yes. When judges case manage these things, the things go onto their role and they appear on particular days. We can go back and look for those uh, those documents. Then I just want to deal with uh, this issue also because you touched on a sick leave and the. Uh, the, the notice that you received. Yes. Were you aware at, at any stage that Judge Maumela suffered a stroke? No. Is he saying he told me? I didn't say he did. Oh, okay. That's why I'm asking because I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the issue, the second one is, you agree with me that when he suffered a stroke, he did not present himself in court because he was not able to do so. I mean, what dates are we talking about here? I'm his head of court. Yes. I mean, on Friday, there's a judge who told me I've been diagnosed with this, which is contagious. I can't come to court on Monday. Yesterday, Sunday, another judge told me that he's been um, told to lay off work because of some conditions. So there's this communication. How was I to know that Judge Maumela had suffered a stroke, and as a result, he's not going to be able to do work if he doesn't talk to me. Yes, okay, let's, let's leave that, uh, yes. at what, because what I want to, to highlight is, yes. he returns to, to work, mm. and, uh, uh, and, and then what engagement did you have with him? No, I had no engagement whatsoever. Mm. He didn't tell me, I wasn't aware what happened. Would you dispute that on the 17th of July, 2020, an email was written to, to yourself? I don't know if the, the email is dated. Yeah, it's dated, it's, it's dated. Mr. Badella, is this in one of the bundles that you're placing before us? Oh, yes. Well, refer us to the page of the oh, bundle. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, okay. Can you just have a different one? Mr. Badella, has Mr. Mops been given this? Uh, no, he's just... Yeah. You've just received no, it now? Yes. And has the witness also not seen this before? No, not yet. Not and, and this we can give... I mean, should you not have provided this to Mr. Mop before? We have Wait. extensive bundles from yes. you already yes. before yes. us. Yes. Yes. I'm instructed <coughs> that uh, this, this bundle... Well, this Because we were, we were busy trying to search for, for the information from Judge Maumela's computer. This was actually extracted last night but as i said i mean as i said we can't put i just i can put propositions uh, i don't all i i wanted to demonstrate that there, there was some contact and information provided or correspondence to the effect that judge maumela at, at certain stages was not feeling well but uh, i don't I, well I, I think you must at a minimum give yes. uh, the jp an opportunity to read I, this i agree i agree um let's let's leave that yeah. though because let's leave that. 
what, what I want to, to address personally is that when, when uh, this happened on the, I think, the 20 September 2020, 20 September 2020, Maumela suffered a stroke. Maumela J suffered, 25 September 20, uh, 2020, he suffered a stroke. The issue and the gist of my uh, 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 highlighting is purely on the fact that on his return, yeah. was there any engagement that you, did, you, you partook to establish his whereabouts and also to, to, to be able to understand what befell of him? You mean after the stroke? Yes. yes. I wasn't aware he'd suffered a stroke. So I wasn't aware he was away. Do, do you agree with me now? I'm turning to the, the your testimony pertaining to the guilt. The what? The, the, pertaining the guilt. 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 You remember you said he's, yeah, he's making himself guilty, guilty of misconduct. Of, of and, and yes. you mentioned the three, all yes. the three. Yes. yes. I want to turn to that now. Yes. 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 Now, do you agree with me that in, in so far as the testimony that we have given, the, the issue of gross misconduct is highlighted as because of the reasons or the extent of delay of giving down, of, of handing down judgment. That is the basis that you say he then misconducted himself in a gross manner. The other basis is uh, I have no formal reason from him saying why he took so long to hand down those judgments. Then, uh, I mean, if you read the Judicial Code, code of Conduct, it's yes. clear that yes. failure to hand down judgments expeditiously is misconduct. Correct. It gets gross when it takes a judge to write a leave to appeal judgment in two years, yes. any other judgment for longer than six months. You know. okay. Do you agree with me that Without the knowledge that you now have of the report of Dr. Lumo, uh, based on the fact that you have not heard or you did not know of Maumela's sickness, you do not have any grounds that he is incapacitated? Well, I conf con when I spoke to him after our engagement in Toyando, he never told me he's sick got underlying reasons. The Lumu thing appeared only arises now, Dr. Yes. Lumu thing, arises now. Yes, correct. And I asked myself, if it was a reason then, why was it not mentioned? Okay. And why was I not sent anything? I mean, I've got a number of judges that were boarded or who asked to be released for medical reasons, and they provided me with substantiated medical reports. And I, I obliged them. So the question I'm asking is that the Talomo thing is, uh, it came out in the last two years, if I'm yes, not mistaken. 2023. Are you saying we should read it to go back no. many years? No. Okay. Yes. So for those many years, I have no reason. And I, I know I have a basis for saying he misconducted himself grossly because I have no reason from him. That tells me why he didn't write those judgments. Okay. okay. Now let, let, let's turn to the issue of, of uh, incompetence. Yes. Uh, I, if you if you know, do you, I mean, and I think this is a difficult one also because I did ask the judge when we were consulting. Is that you agree with me that the the appeal, the successful appeal against any judge's uh, judgment, it does not necessarily. Uh, uh, convey a message of incompetence? No, it doesn't at all, yes. yes. And, uh, and also, you agree with me that the complaints that the tribunal is today hearing relates to past conduct of Mr. Uh, of Judge of Maumera J. You agree with that? It relates to past conduct. You can call it past conduct. It's on record. We know he yes. failed to hand down his judgments. And, and I see you say 
you limit incompetence to appeal findings against the judge. I never mentioned that. No, no. I as just... one of my reasons for me saying he was grossly incompetent. Yes. I, I didn't mention that because you agree with me that different judges have got different styles of writing. Yes. And uh, they've got a different ways of uh, conveying a message yes. to the parties. Yes. Yes. Can I just, just if you don't mind, can uh, may the, the tribunal assist me just standing down for five minutes? I just want to take instruction. Five minutes only. Are you almost at the end of your... Almost, that's why I'm asking for that. I just want to make sure that I've covered uh, all the issues that were raised in evidence. Um, you, 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 you can't whisper. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm instructed that it, it would be better if we just, just a few minutes. Uh, check this yeah. I know that it is. Uh, yeah, see, Mr. Badella, we, we've been accommodating yes. to you. Um, 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 I think now yes. uh, really you, you, you're testing. Yes. I don't want to stretch. I think I think from from what uh, I've uh, taken instruction, uh, Chairperson, is that uh, you know uh, the only issue that my instructing attorney uh, felt that uh, I, we needed to deal with is the putting the version in terms of the those sick the, the correspondence that he introduced, which has not been seen by the judge. Uh, perhaps if, if, if then later on we can get an opportunity to deal with that uh, to end the cross examination. Maybe just start, maybe to assist. Me. If if the tribunal was to indulge and grant the adjournment, I can make sure my witnesses lined up, and so that we start seamlessly after after the adjournment, I can I can facilitate that in the meantime. Well, that's that's, a, that's your saving grace, Mr. Badella. We will adjourn for five minutes. Uh, we adjourn.
Yes, Mr. Badella, did you manage to yes. I'm sort out? Yes, I'm, I'm okay. indebted to, right. to, to, to the members of the tribunal. In actual fact, uh, I'm only going to deal with two issues just to highlight in the bundle. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the first one, DJP, uh, would you look at the bundle that has just been provided to you? Uh, yes. Uh, on page nine. Nine. On page one. Oh, yes. Page one. Uh, if, if you look just after it was there, you can see first there's a forward message that is dated the, the 18th of March. Yes. Yes. But just below there, you agree with me that this, that is what comes below, is an, an email that was transmitted by Maumela J on the 13th of July 2020 addressed to yourself. Yes. Yes. This message highlights or indicates or informs you that there is an ill health that has befell Malmela J. Do you agree? Especially he's, if you look at paragraph one. He's saying, I happen to be laden with a few chronic underlying conditions. Yes. For now, I do not present with any notable or adverse health challenge. Yes. And then he goes on to explain that he yes. sees certain uh, health practitioners in Limpopo. Correct. The gist of this email was to ask for a permit. Yes to travel in between provinces, isn't it? Not to tell me that he's ill, he can't do his work. Yes, but uh, JP... Uh, unless you're suggesting that. I'm suggesting that because he says, I happen to be laden with chronic. And that's, that's the, he's saying I'm ill. You will, you will argue that. Okay, all right. What does the sentence mean? For now, I do not present with any notable or adverse health challenge. Because if he was asking for time off, he would have said so. He's asking for a permit. Yes, yes as you correctly said. But all yes. I'm, I'm paying attention to the tribunal. Yes. You had testified that there was no communication to yourselves yes. with respect to, to ill health. Ill health preventing him from doing his work. Yes. Yes, that was my evidence. Then I would like to, to, to you also uh, testify that there was never a responses from Maumela J to some of your queries. I said there were some, some. responses. Yes. yes, I didn't say there was never. Never. Okay. Yeah. All right. In that instance, you recall that if you look at page five. Yes. There, uh, at the bottom, there yes. is there a, a there's a, a query from yourself dated 30 May, 2023. Yes. Uh, in and that query was responded to. Uh, you can see on the 30th of May, the same day. Of uh, when it, the email was sent. Yes, I responded, yes. Uh, and uh, just to put it in context, yes. I wasn't querying reserve judgments here. Yes. I was querying parthead matters under his belt. Yes. The only thing I'm dealing with is yeah. that in in the queries that were there, I just want to demonstrate that. Yes. Maumela J did respond to the queries you sent to some of them. To some of the responses. Yes. Okay. That would be all. Thank you, Mr. Badela. Can I just ask you, Judge President, this issue of the stroke, which I'm, I'm not quite sure how long uh, Judge Malmela was actually out of office, but my sense is it was some period. Would, would I be right in that? I'm not aware. I haven't received because what I'm what I'm talking about. If he was away for quite some while, yes. why would no one notice that? Why would no one notice that? Why would the, for example, the deputy judge president or anybody else, if I was away for two weeks out of my office, someone would surely have got two hold of two weeks would have come to my attention. Yes. I, I don't know how long he was out uh, with a stroke. Uh, that's why I say I have no knowledge of it. So, in other words, you were completely unaware of this and nobody else pointed this out to no. you, Ty? No. In fact, uh, J.P. Davis, if it was a prolonged absence due to this, the first person to know would be the DJP, prompted by the role, plan, the role planner from the DPP to say, we've got matters, they can't be attended to because the judge is out. Where is the judge or whatever? Then we then try and find out where the judge is and to get to understand why he's not in his court. 
But I'm not away. I'm not away. I can add the DJP if uh, he was away. But uh, Judge Mohamed never told me he had a stroke. And then just one other question for me. We had this confusion with the schedule and so and so forth. Yes. And it was put to you, of course, that he had cases allocated to him for the nine weeks, as yes. it were, of yes. a term, or ten weeks. Yes. But I'm assuming that if you get one or two cases in a week, that doesn't mean you're in court the whole week. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. You could be, yes. but you don't have to be. Yes. Would I be right in assuming You could that? be correct, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, JP. Um, JP, if I listen to what we've heard this morning, there's a perception that's created that um, that firstly the Gauteng division is one in which judges are overburdened and unable to do their jobs. Would that be a correct per uh, perception? Judges are overburdened, but they are told, so you want to apply for work in Gauteng, this is the division. And these are the, the dynamics. That's why, before anyone <clears throat> is recommended to or shortlisted to go for an interview for Houting, we make sure that he has acted at least for two full terms to really get to understand what they're getting into in this division, right? So, yes, it has a lot of work, there are a lot of dynamics, but only a few judges um, don't deliver. Judge Maumela and Judge Mgubisa Tusi stand out as those ones. But before them, we had the Judge Poswas and the Judge Spilks and whatever. For the, but it's select judges. It's not everyone. There are a lot of other judges. I mean, I think Mr. Badella was trying to say Judge Maumela was uh, overladen. I could easily get the stats of another judge who didn't spend time in criminal work, who always had heavy lifting work every term, who never had the problem that we have with Judge Maumela. So I'm just illustrating the fact that, yes, there's a lot of work in the division, but when you go in there, you go with your eyes open, knowing you've got to use all your resources to make sure you are up to date with your work, whatever available time, you work smart and you deliver. So it's not, it's a, it's, a, it's a very wrong generalization to say everyone is struggling and therefore they are not performing their work. No, that's incorrect. And um, Mr. Badella alluded to, well, he, he began a question, didn't quite finish it, but the question was, I think, how was Judge Maumela um, did he know that you had this open door policy that uh, if judges were concerned that they should come to you? How did he? How was he aware of that policy? Do you want to respond to that? In 2012, when I was um, confirmed as the incoming JP of the division, I had divisional meetings in both courts where I was going to tell the judges that as the new JP, how I was going to work with them. That's where I told them about keeping chambers in both courts, about visible leadership, about an open door policy. And he was in that meeting in Pretoria, because I also had it in Jobek, where it was all laid out. No judge can come today and say they didn't know this is how I operated. My last question. Um, you mentioned in your evidence that you had talked to Judge Rolinga. Yes. Uh, and asked him to inquire from Judge Marmelo what the problem was with the delay. In, yes, in... it was with the delayed judgment. I, I mean, and... Judge Rolinga is uh, he's just retired. One of the senior judges, former magistrate like Judge uh, Marmelo. And I said, I know, uh, Hamisi, you are close to Judge Marmelo. I have a problem. Can you talk to him and understand what the issues are so that we can assist him? And did he come back to you? Um, I think we spoke often. He did say I spoke to him and uh, he'll try his best to, to, to shape up, something to that effect. And he was not the only person I spoke to. I spoke to other former magistrates on the bench, you know, to say, look, talk to him. You are magistrates. You are not struggling. He's struggling. What is it that... 
we can do to help him. Yes. Okay, thank you. Comment from that, I just forgot to ask you. Early in, in your testimony, Judge President, you mentioned that Judge Malib had a lower workload. Did I get you right? That he, he wasn't given like sort of a heavier, sort of the, the heavy workloads that some of your judges clearly yes. had. What, what I meant was because yeah. he spent most of his time in criminal trials, yes. he wouldn't have what you call the heavy workload of the division. Yeah. What uh, Commissioner Rajab Badlender mentioned yeah. to say uh, the heavy, stressful work of the division. Clearly, he, he was not in that late, that range. So what I wanted to ask you was, was he not in that race because you recognized early on? Yes, that's why that I mentioned. This was a judge who was struggling to cope? Yes. That's why I mentioned that if you look at the work I've given, I've never given him even one special motion. Okay. Because had I given a special motion mm. on this record, no judgment would have been come out of him. Got you. Thank you. Um, JP, can I understand how many of former magistrates are in your division? Quite a number. Um, uh, in, in Jobek, I've got Judge Windell, Judge Modau, Judge Mahalelo. Um, in that's Jobek, uh, could living out one or two. Yes. Judge Mia, Shanaz Mia. Um, and all of these judges are junior to Judge Maumela. Um, they were appointed late. That's Jobek. In yes. Pretoria, we do have, I've got Judge Collis, uh, Judge um, Subia, uh, Francis Subia. Um, I can't remember who others. Yes, we do have. Some, some have retired, I think. Yeah. Did any of them have similar difficulties because that's, no. I just want to understand whether it is the background that might have caused the problem. No, no. Okay. I mean, one of them, I mean, take <coughs> Judge Modao. He's a star. He's a former regional magistrate. You see, there's a difference. Regional magistrates do less, less civil work. Mm -hmm. And my experience is they struggle with the civil work of the yes. high court as opposed to regional, to district court magistrates. That's Judge Maumela. He was a district court magistrate. Okay. So they don't struggle with the civil work of the high court, mm -hmm. right? But I'm mentioning um, Judge uh, Mudao deliberately. He's a former regional magistrate, like Judge Mahalelo, but they're high flyers. Okay. Um, and Ju Judge, uh, sorry, okay. Judge uh, Zinat Karelsa, it's a former magistrate. She's now in the SA. All right. Um, as I understood, your evidence is that the grounds of the complaint that we should look at now are gross incompetence and gross misconduct. You are not including incapacity. Um, I don't think incapacity comes in. I would think it would come in had uh, the illness, it, that is if in my layman's understanding of what that term means, had the illness been a <clears throat> major reason for him not being able to do his work. Yes. I say it's gross incompetence because if you look at the types of judgments he delayed, the length of time he took, and the quality that he produced thereafter tells me that he's grossly incompetent. Okay. Um, I, I I think I think that covers all that I wanted to raise, um, Judge President, um, Mr. Badela. Do you have anything that arising from the questions by the commissioners before I let Mr. Mop to re-examine the witness? 
not. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mob? No questions. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Mr. Mob. Uh, thank you, Judge President. You are excused from further attending. You can sit in if uh, you're interested uh, in, in observing the proceedings, but uh, um, we no longer oblige you to, to be here. Thank you, Justice Jeffter. I'm relieved to be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Mop, are you are you ready with your next witness? Uh, Indeed, Justice After the next witness is is uh, just outside. Okay. The next witness um, will be Mr. Nkosana Kitsane. Okay, or uh, is the, the deponent to this affidavit? Indeed, Justice okay. After. Uh, I must thank my learned friends who have agreed that the affidavit will be placed before the tribunal. It is from pages three eight one to three nine zero. Okay. And so, Chairperson, I'll only highlight certain aspects and I'll obviously ask maybe more leading questions and in the ordinary course, since some of the aspects are not in dispute necessarily. I'll focus on the issues where I think there are disputes. Huh? Uh, and Mr. Badella is happy with that. Yes, I've, I've canvassed that with. Okay, with, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mop, what's the position with this witness regarding attendance of people who normally would not be allowed to sit in and uh, the live streaming? Uh, Chairperson, I did canvas with him whether he had any objections and that if he had objections, you would need to substantiate that. And on reflection, he said you wouldn't have any objection. Okay, so we can just... We can continue. continue. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Um, the the evidence of the next witness is going to be led in an open hearing. So people who are in here would otherwise be required to, to leave. Are welcome to remain in the room. Good afternoon, Mr. Kitsane. Afternoon. Um, have I 
pronounced your second name correctly. It's actually pronounced Khitsane. Khitsane. Yes. Omosudu. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, could we start by having your full names for the record? Okay. My name is Unkosana Khitsane. Could you spell Khitsane because K- not all of us are Basutu. Oh, yes. That's correct. <laughs> It's K H I T S A N E. Thank you. Uh, do you have any objection to taking the oath before testifying, or would you prefer an affirmation? No, I do not. I do okay, not have any you, you can take the oath. Do you swear that the evidence you are about to give shall be tr- the truth, and it will only be the truth? If so, raise your right hand and say, "So help me God." So I God. Thank you, Mr. Khizan. Thank you. Mr. Mop? Thank you. No, it's fine. Is it correct that you are currently employed at the Office of the Chief Justice as a Judge's Secretary and that you are based at the Mpumalanga Division of the High Court in Mbombela? That's correct. In front of you, say there's a document, a uh, stipulated affidavit with your name on it. It runs from pages 381 to 390. Can you just confirm that this is, in fact, the affidavit that you deposed to in preparation for your evidence before the tribunal? It is. You can, confirm it. You can put it aside, sir, for now. So is, is it correct that you commenced your employment at Mbombela? the High Court on the 1st of March, 2019. That is correct. And that prior to that appointment, you were employed on contract as a judge's secretary at the Gauteng High Court in Pretoria, where you served as Judge Maumela secretary. That is correct. And is it correct that your, your term ended in Gauteng in February, 2019? Yes. And approximately how long did you serve as, as Judge Mamela's secretary, sir? Um, on a contract basis from 2014, 24, I know my affidavit says 2015, that's a bit of an error on my side. It's 2014 to February 2019. So on, on a reflection, you think it's, it's, it's possibly 2014 20, that you 20, started? 2014, with, that's That you correct. start with Judge Mamela. Now, and is it correct that your duties, uh, typical of a judge's secretary, would have included administrative and secretarial support? You manage the judge's diary, attended to correspondence, type judgments, updated court files, and accompany the judge to court. The That's, normal duties. Yeah, yeah, normal duties. Now, your, your, your presence before the tribunal today is in respect of... of of the specific issues that Judge Mamela has highlighted in his representations during these proceedings, not before the tribunal, but previously. And so that is the purpose of your your evidence uh, here today. Um, So the the first first theme I want to deal with is is your departure from from the Pretoria High Court. Now you were on contract in Pretoria and the Bombela position was a permanent one. Was a permanent one, yes. And you applied for that position in December 2018, whilst you were still in Pretoria? That's correct. And as you stated, you, you started on the 1st of March. Huh? That's correct. Before you left Gauteng to travel to Mumbela to take up the position there, did, did you inform anyone that you were leaving Gauteng, sir? Yes, my line manager, um, supervisor, Ms. Gift Nguna had an idea. Actually, she knew that I'll, I'm leaving. Okay. Yes. So, you, so you informed her? Yes. Did you inform Judge Maumela of your intended departure? No, I did not. Can you, can you explain that, sir? You can put the affidavit aside. Just explain in your own words what, what transpired. Huh? Why didn't you inform Judge Maumela that you were leaving? Um, on the last weeks, before actually the last month, during February, because that's when I knew that I'm leaving. Uh, I've been accepted in Bombella. Um, I had a call, I received a call from a colleague of mine in Johannesburg. 
she used to assist Judge Maumela when the judge has to do circuit court in Johannesburg. She explained to me like, look, um, we know each other. I do not want any kind of bad blood between us. Um, apparently, Judge Maumela has been requesting me to come through to assist him and replace you in the high court. And um, he did. she says he did mention that um, he will speak to the court manager to see if this can happen. So what happened was I was a bit disappointed that um, I thought me and Judge Momela are in good standing because everything was fine. I did not get any complaints from him. Uh, I was shocked. Then I thought to myself, oh, okay. Um, then I explained to her that, okay, it's fine. You can come through because in that month I had already gotten my um, call from the Bombella High Court people that, look, you can come through and start on the 1st of March. Okay. Yeah. So, so despite the fact that that you, you didn't inform Judge Maumela that you were leaving, what was the state of your work when, when you left uh, Pretoria to go to Mpumalanga? Well, I made sure that everything is improper because I knew that I wouldn't be there and I did not want to, in, did not want to get any calls saying that, um, look, you left this hanging, you left the judge confused. I knew that uh, I'll be leaving and I made sure that the office is proper as there was a system in play. Can, can you just explain to the tribunal what, what system did you have in place? And, and, and we're talking about the system of managing court files. Yes, that's correct. Just explain to the, to the, to the tribunal. Okay, the system was, um, we normally, we have what we call in the high courts a duty roster. What we used to do with me and Judge Maumela is we would break down the duty roster week one up until the last week of the duty roster. What I'll do is uh, per page, we'll take out week one and in, in Judge Maumela's office, there will be a certain of a wall on the side, on the right, side, right hand side of where you used to sit. That wall, that's where we would paste, um, plug the week ones, week two, week three, sort of as a, lab, uh, a diary. We would just take the diary of the whole term, the, the duty roster, and just insert it on the wall so that the judge can see what follows, what's reserved, what's pending, what's still coming. So, so that, that wall, as you call it, it, it listed the matters that the judge List. was seized with? Yes. Matters, matters to come? That's correct. Matters where judgments were reserved? Yes. So, so, so all areas of work the judge was seized with would, would be set out on that wall? Yes. And duplicate to the wall, the files that are in the judge's chambers would be plugged still and marked. Just, just dealing with the theme of files, who kept the court files that Judge Mamela was seized with? Do you keep the files or did the judge keep the no, files? No, I did not keep the files. The judge kept the files. I actually did not want anything in the office where we shared. We were three of us. I did not want any judge judge's file in my office. Uh, I felt like if this file is still pending, it needs to be in the judge's office so the judge can see. So when you say you, you, you shared with two colleagues, were those fellow judges, secretaries yes, that you shared, an, you shared an office with? Huh? That's correct. Now, you, you have the wall where you tabulate what's, what's, what's to come and the status of it. So how does it, the judge know that there's movement on, on a particular matter? Huh? Well, depending on each and every matter on the, on the wall, if there's any update on it, probably judgment handed down or his argument filed, the wall would be updated. If, it, if we are done with it, we'd remove it from the wall. Okay. Then another one will be placed in place of that one. And who actually did the physical updating of? of I'll, I'll do the physical do updating. That, huh? And in terms of reserved judgments, how, how, how did you manage between yourself and the judge reserved judgments? Huh? Reserved judgments, obviously, the files will be kept in the judge's office uh, with the plugging probably named, reserved, on so-and-so date. Uh, then probably then named um, heads of argument pending from the parties. Then on the wall, the wall will be updated, saying such a matter is reserved. And there was a list that we used to do uh, that has the parties, date of reserved, probably if it was handed down, then date of uh, judgment handed down. 
So you're talking about the list. Is that the reserve judgment list? Huh? The reserve judgment list. And and how often would that just that list be updated huh? from from, from well, your office? Huh? Well, depending on how often the judgments are handed down, same time it will be updated. So on the case files itself, you, you spoke about the wall and the notes on the wall, but on the case file itself, how would you communicate to the judge that there's been activity on the file to update the status of, of the file itself? Huh? Um, same as the wall. As soon as I update the wall, I'll update the case file. With, with the note as with well? With the note saying, all, file, all heads of argument have been submitted. The file is ready. So maybe just just for the benefit of the tribunal, you've you've provided three photographs uh, which are attached to your affidavit. Um, if you get, it's page three eighty eight. If you do just explain to the tribunal what what is what is depicted in that picture on three eighty eight. All right, this is um, the judges' chamber, and on the sofas there there are files. These are files that were So kept. the files in the in the foreground is is, is that the intention to depict? Huh? Yes, so these are yes. examples of the files that you These you're are the to... examples of the files that I'm actually busy explaining. It's either part of them are reserved or it's either they are still upcoming. Upcoming. Yes. If you can just look at the next page three eighty nine. It's a photograph of various sheets of paper. Uh, up against a uh, wooden panels. Can you just explain what is being depicted in this photograph? This is what we then called the wall then. That's uh, various types of matters that were still to come or that are still pending. And actually to summarize it all, it would be the duty roster. As you can see on your right hand side, there is one that's written week three. That will be part of the duty roster with the date and other judges in that matter. It will be a motion court. Um, it was three judges. Okay. Now, we don't have to go no. into the detail, but just generally speaking, okay. so this, this is an yeah, example this, this of, of is, how, how you manage the updating of, of the status of matters to alert correct. the judge. Yes. And now you've also provided a third photograph, um, page 390. <laughs> Um, that's a photograph. It's, it's uh, you in the, in the foreground, and, and one sees um, documents at the back. Can you just explain that. Where was this taken? Oh, and yes, what is the, it depicting? This was taken in the judge's office. Um, I was seated on his chair. I just finished updating the wall with the following upcoming matters, all reserved matters. So that's you sitting in the judge's chair, in, obviously in his absence. Uh, <laughs> obviously, yeah, <laughs> that is. <laughs> and the reserve judgment list, you, you spoke about that you, it was your duty to update that. Uh, where, where, where would that information go, the information of the reserve judgments? Why was it necessary to, to provide that list? Reserve judgment, um, the JP's office would often require stats from the judges' registrars uh, of, of uh, reserve judgments and uh, handed down judgments. So that list will be then created and then updated if need be, then sent. Well, from me, it'll go to my supervisor then, yeah. That's fine. Then just maybe three broad themes, which I, I think I can deal with in, 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 the same, in the same question really. Part of your secretarial and administrative support to the judge was typing, correspondence, and engaging with parties. That's correct. Were you ever remiss in your duty in ensuring that matters were typed promptly, messages were sent promptly to litigants or to parties, um, and correspondence being dealt with promptly? Were you ever remiss in your duties while you served Judge Marmela as his, as his secretary? Yes. Yes. Um, if I understand your question, was I ever attend into that. You know, did you ever fail in your duties? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I would make sure immediately if the judge says um, this matter is uh, reserved, inform the parties. That will be done promptly. If um, one needs to be typed, uh, probably then the judge would probably give me a draft judgment, a draft handwritten judgment. I'll type that. Immediately after that, after a day, a day or two, depending on how long it is, send it back to the judge, the soft copy and the hard copy. 
so your soft copy and the hard copy. The In hard other words, copy. electronic copy of, of, of what you yes. typed as well. Yes. Did, did you type all of Judge Marmela's um, judgments or did he receive support no. elsewhere? No, no, I do not type all. There were some that I'm typing probably half of it, probably a quarter of it, or just seeing the last finalized version, then I send it to the judge. Most of them, the I think the judge had someone typing it in full. I'm not quite sure. You're not who sure did about that. that. I'm just, not quite sure. And just to that. clarify, you say you typed half or quarter. Yeah, depending uh, on. Are you referring to the, the the length or the the extent of the documents you provided? In other words, it's not the entire judgment you're typing in one not, go. It would not. It's be portions of a judgment being presented to you in a handwritten note. You then type that up and and send it back yes, to the it judge. It would not be the entire judgment. It would be probably half of the judgment. Some will be recorded via dictaphone, or some would be draft handwritten. Were you ever accused of misplaced, misplacing correspondence or, or file notes? Not until now. In, in, <laughs> whilst, whilst working with Judge Mambela, you, you were never no, accused? No, no. So, so, so if a judge's secretary had to misplace intentionally correspondence and file notes, how, how, how do you view that? I mean, if, if someone had to intentionally do that, huh? Mis misplaced correspondence and file notes. In other words, deliberately subvert the work of, of a judge. Um, I don't think any judge register would want to be in such a state and do such a thing because at the end of the day, it's, it lies with you. The party would say, look, we sent it to you, you read it, and now the judge said they did not receive it. We would not do that. Do you accept if, if someone conducted himself in such a manner to be unprofessional conduct that would warrant disciplinary action? That's correct, yes. Have you ever been uh, accused or subjected to disciplinary action for no. failing to, to serve Judge Marmela no. diligently? No. In just in terms of your contactability after, after you left March 2019, are you aware of any attempts by the judge or a representative or representatives to, to contact you whilst you were in the Bombela? No. Um, no one tried to contact me from the judge or the team around the judge. And when you left, you said your, your, your line manager knew that you were leaving. Yes, she knew. She actually knew before I did. That you were leaving. Yeah. Did yes. your mobile phone number change or your email change when you moved from Pretoria to... No, no, it was still the same. Still, your, your contact details were still, yes. were still the same. Still the same. And part of my colleagues knew, well, the ones who were in my office, just to add to that, because on the day, I think it was the last day or the day before, my supervisor came into the office and said, did you tell your colleagues that you live in Tumbombela? Then I said, no, I did not. I did not want any hassle and bustle. So some of my colleagues did know. Okay, so, so just lastly then, sir, you, you, you served Judge Mamela for se several years. Yes. In your time in working with him, were there, were there ever occasions when, when you had to look for court files and court files had to be found or retrieved? Yes. Can you explain uh, the circumstances, how that, how that, that, that arose? Um, you'd find that sometimes we do go to court. When we get to court, some files are missing if it's motion. Some files are missing, and uh, I'd go back to the chambers, try to locate them. If they're so not, which, which, which chambers? Judges' chambers, sorry. Yes. Judges' chambers, to try to locate them. If not, then I'll rush to the judge's vehicle. Sometimes I'll find them in the back seat or the boot. And if not, uh, the, there are some points where uh, I used to take the judge's vehicle with the judge knowing to the judge's residence to look for the file. And did you find files yeah, on yeah. An occasion? Yeah. And so how did it come about that the files would be in the vehicle or at the house? Just, just explain that briefly to the tribunal. Um, normally the judge, the judge had uh, a system of taking files home, probably to work on them on a later stage or later on. So normally in a day, he would take files. There was a a black Woolworths bag that he used, we used to pack files in. There's more than one, more than two. 
Then we put, pack the files on a later stage on in the day when we're done. The judge then will I'll take the files, pack them in the car. Then the files will go probably for the whole week, depending on if we need them for the week. And if it's for the following week, after the weekend, you, the files would return. Some were missing and some documents were missing in them. Just just to clarify, you say you went to the, the judge's home with, with, the, with, this, with this knowledge. Is that, that's in Pretoria you're referring that's to? That's in Pretoria, yes. Did the judge tra travel elsewhere with any files? Um, sometimes if the judge is traveling to Venda, I know that I'll pack files. Then you take them to Venda. Probably if it's a Friday, then he will then leave with the files. So, so if, if there's a suggestion, sir, that you, through your conduct, somehow contributed to unreasonable delays in the handing down of, of reserve judgments by Judge Momilla, how do you respond to, to such a statement, sir? I'd say that is incorrect, totally incorrect, because I did what I needed to do, my job meaning, on time, promptly, as needed. So the delay, not on my part. And then just lastly, with your departure from Pretoria to Mbombela, would the judge have been able to operate seamlessly in your absence after, after leaving? And, and Yes, that's correct. Um, the system that we were utilizing was that the judge should not need any reminder in most cases because the wall would serve as a reminder. If I forgot, then it's on the wall for the next week. And if there is a handing over needed, anyone coming into that office would just see the wall and say, okay, we can see that we're two judges doing this and we have so much in reserved. As I've said, there was no files in my office that needed to be searched or located. And, and then lastly, when you left, sir, was, was the, the system that you used to support the judge, was that system up to date? Huh? It was up to date. I left it up to date. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you, Justice Lefter. Thank you, Mr. Mob. Um, Mr. Badella, uh, are you ready? Thank you. Yes, you, you testify that you had a very good relationship with Judge Maumel, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. And uh, this working relationship did not hamper you to either confide on him, on what you wanted to do, is that correct? That's correct. Up until the call that I mentioned that I received, which shocked and disappointed me. Yes. And you are aware that, or you agree with me that that call was not coming from Judge Maumela. Did you then confirm that with him? No, I did not, as I knew that Judge normally goes to Johannesburg and the same lady is the one who actually normally assists the judge in Johannesburg. So I did not take it to Judge Maumela to confront I mean, there should be boundaries between a registrar and a judge. Yes, you indicated that you had a good relationship. That's why I'm asking this. Yes. I, I, don't, I don't say there's no boundary, but I'm asking on learning that from somebody else whom you, you don't, you said colleague, is, can you be specific who it is that the called you from um, Joburg? Sure, I do not recall her name currently. I do not recall her name. Yeah but I do know that she came through at some point. That was the time now I was in Nels break. Yes. How, how did you verify that indeed Judge Maumela spoke to him about, about uh, him replacing you? Well, uh, from her call that I, I could gather that, that okay, probably this is how, what it is. As she's telling me that, look, Judge Maumela, is even trying to speak to the court manager 
I could not see her lying about that because she was based in Johannesburg. Okay. Now, you, you testify that in most instances, the files remained in the judge's chambers. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. How would you know then that a file is missing if the files are in the judge's chambers? By the time we need them, by the time we need to go to court, yes. those files won't be there, which I know very well that it should correspond with the wall, that certain files are in, and I would know that certain files I have placed as depicted in my pictures. Okay. Can you tell me, you agree with me that papers stuck on the wall can sometimes fall off? I do agree, but not my papers. Because <laughs> the thing is, every day, each and every morning before the judge comes in, I'll come early to update, obviously check emails, check what party did what or said what, then go into the judge's chamber, yes. update the wall. All right. Is there anything outside the wall that you, you used to keep track of the work that was there? Or was it the only the, or everything was on the wall? I understand what you're doing on the wall, by the way. I just yes. want to find out. Once on the wall, is there any other thing to do record for up in your computer or anywhere to know that this is what we have? Yes, I had a, uh, I had a system that, I've, that I would open up folders for matters on my computer to update when i update the wall obviously the soft copy stays in my system and the soft copy that will be on the wall or the hard copy that will be on the wall will be seemingly on top of the files so i had a system on my side still to remind me unlike going to the office in the judges chambers and having to look at the wall that i created okay. who did you share that system that was in the computer with well, the one that is my, because it was my personal computer, I had created that kind of a system. What I'll share with the judge is the final outset, the final copies. Okay. So when you left the job, you took that with you or what happens to that system? No, no, um, I left everything as it were in Pretoria because now it was a different thing now. I had to reapply for the job that I am doing now in Bombela, which is still the judge's secretary but I had to leave everything that belonged in Pretoria. Okay. You, you indicated in your testimony that you did everything promptly. How will the tribunal establish that? Well, via email correspondence, because that's what actually is in question, via email correspondence and uh, via what of shown to the tribunal that this is what I used to do. And the, like I said before, the wall would be updated immediately to update the judge. Now, I just want to find out also in, in terms of the, 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 the system, uh, remember I, I asked if the system is still there. Did you share that with Judge Maumel? Did I? Share it with Judge Maumel. The system? Yes. No. It was, there was no need for me to share it with the judge because the judge had a hard copy of the system. Remember what the judge had in the chambers I had on my system. Now, during the time you're working with the judge, it was testified here that, or rather, it was testified that he was not in court at one of the instances, just making this example. Did you manage the, uh, the judge's engagements? during the time you were serving, you were working with the judge? Yes. Yes. Do you recall any instance, in actual fact, in the, this instance that uh, where he could not appear in one court and was allocated to another, how did that come about? Oh, well, it will depend on which <laughs> court. Sorry, Chairperson. Um, <laughs> I, I, I try not to object, but if my learned friend can just give a bit more context to the witness to yeah. try and assist him to answer that question. I think it's very open-ended. Yeah. I think the witness oh. will battle to understand. The, the question is that the, the, uh, there is one instant where the judge was unable to appear in, a, in court in Johannesburg because he was in uh, Limpopo. Okay. 
And my question to you is that as you were arranging the, court, the judge's affairs in so far where he is to appear, how did the conflict occur that the judge is supposed to appear in one court and yet he's in another? I'm not quite sure if it was Johannesburg. I think Sorry, was Mr. before you answer that, Mr. Badel, I think you have to be more specific. This yes. witness presumably didn't hear the evidence this yes. morning. There was a part... You have to yeah. You have to explain what matter, where it was set down. Yeah. And it was Pretoria, not Johannes. Pretoria, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Basically, what, what I wanted to establish with you is that the affairs of the judge, uh, in 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 the main, are, are managed and controlled by yourself in terms of his allocation. Correct. No. Not in terms of my allocation. We would follow the duty roster. That's what I'm saying in terms of his yes. allocation. That's yes. What I'm yes. If if we are mentioning the war, yes, yes. Yeah. And 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 uh, if there is a conflict, you'd be the first one to see that there is a conflict in the allocation to the judge. Is that correct? That is that's correct. Yes. Correct. Uh, in this instance, did, I mean, I just just want to get you. I mean, there is an instant where. The judge was allocated to hear matter in Pretoria, and yet he was appearing in, in, in Limpopo in another matter. Are you aware of that? No, Mr. Bell, the evidence of the yes. judge president was he had postponed yes. a badly had matter to a recess period in Pretoria. Yes. And some counsel flew from Cape Town coming for that matter, but the judge was not there on the appointed date. Mm -hmm. And when the JP phoned, he told the JP that he was in Limpopo. Oh, yes. So, so. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, tribunal members, what, what I want to establish, maybe I'm not putting the question properly, is that uh, the judge would work according to the schedule that is uh, confirmed by his registrar. In other words, once the matters are allocated, as he said, what, what happens is that if there are matters they would put on the wall, they would know where the judge is supposed to be. The proposition I'm putting through is that in that instant, uh, the issue of conflict, that is the judge being in two different places at the same time, when you've got a system that tells you where you're supposed to be, okay, uh, that's why I was not even mentioned as to, if you've got the system, how did the conflict ha happen? Okay, now I, I understand you, but is that based on the evidence of the JP or is that based on, on the version of your client? Because the JP gave the impression that in Limpopo, he was not at work. Yes. He was at work at some other time when he had to phone Judge Makafola and ask him to give him the phone. So, so, so. I, I think we should okay. not conflate the two occasions. So, yeah. to be fair to the witness, if you want to put to him that, according to the judge, it happened that on the date he was supposed to be in Pretoria, he was in Limpopo at court. Yeah. And then, if if that is the point that you are pursuing, then then I think you should clarify it. Yes, yes, yes. Because the, the, Maumela J's version was that he was in court during that, that period in Limpopo. Yeah. Yes, because he had uh, uh, he was attending to a, 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 a party head judgment, as far as I recall. Okay, let's let's proceed from there. But we, he will testify. Let's put. Let, I will. No, but you, you know the dates. Why don't you put the dates to the witness? Just check the taxi for it. Okay. Okay, that's the yeah. Okay, I will I will pass through because my client it is cannot recall the dates. Yes, yes. Now I just want to turn now to, to the issue. Yes. Then he will say X, 
Yes. There's a response from the witness. But that level is a response from the witness. Yes. Because yes. I can't quite know what version you put into yes, it, yes. if in any. But if you don't want to, that's fine with me. I will, I will do that, Judge Davis. Uh, 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 Judge Maumela will testify that in one of the instances when uh, he could not attend a court roster that was in Pretoria, he was in Limpopo attending to a court he, he had a court hearing in in limpopo what would you say about the conflicting uh, 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 appearance that he had uh, not the, the, the competing hearings that he had to attend to because he could only attend one at a time of course what would be a comment on that well i would say that we wouldn't put any conflicting um matters on the wall because there is one side where that would say Johannesburg on the state because remember we're following the duty roster as it is would say Pretoria on the state if there is one criminal matter that is a party here for Johannesburg or Polokwan for that matter it will be on the wall and there wouldn't be any conflict okay there wouldn't be any conflict now, I want us to deal with the issues that you dealt with about missing files now, and that you went to. Yeah. I'm sorry, just before that, Mr. Padella, if the judge were to go to Limpopo on official duty, normally would he leave you be behind as, as the registrar? Oh, it would depend on probably our allocation as judges' registrars. Sometimes I'd go with. Sometimes I'd stay behind. That's why in Johannesburg, there was a lady in some instance who would assist the judge in Johannesburg or Palm Ridge. But sometimes, because I remember, I think I went once or twice uh, with the judge in Palm Ridge. In all instances, it was not me. But if I'm needed, probably there's a shortage, then I would then have to be booked in. But it's not always and how would you know what had happened in Johannesburg, whether a matter is partly had, is postponed to a particular date, so that you can put it on your wall? How would you know about that? Um, I would be informed by the judge if I do request that from the judge, or I would be informed by whomever is assisting the judge. But please note this so-and-so is reserved or so-and-so is pending up until the state so will you be dependent on the judge for that information no not no. fully not fully on the judge so if a matter was set down in pretoria which the judge had postponed as I understand it and people were flying from cape town would you know about that yes i'd know about it and would you also know that the judge was involved in something in Limpopo on that day I would not. Why not? I would only have what I know. And in Limpopo, then it would be a different matter if someone else went with him. And I'll just update what I have, the matters in Pretoria, if I am, am in Pretoria for that term with the judge. So, so do you... <laughs> sorry, go ahead. If the judge went off to Limpopo, you would not know that? I would, I would know. You would? Yes, I would know. Uh, that's why I was requesting from um, Council if Council would clarify which date or what kind of a matter oh. did the judge go to Limpopo for and left me in Pretoria. So do you recall an instance in which a matter was postponed to recess, a part heard was postponed to recess, and the parties uh, turned up at court and were ready to proceed, but the judge wasn't there? Yes. <coughs> and do you recall, that, was that the same matter where the judge was actually in Limpopo? I think that's the matter where judgment needed to be handed down in that instance. Sorry, just to clarify. So I, I understood it was a part heard, it was postponed to recess. Yes. And you were talking about a judgment being handed down. Um, I could be mistaken, but I do remember the matter that judge was not 
whereby the duty roster did mention that such a matter is coming because if it's not on the duty roster, it will be updated from our office, amending to the duty roster, depending on the judge's date. On probably he tells me that, look, tell the parties this matter will be dealt on so-and-so in recess. Then that will be placed on the wall and the parties will be informed that on this day, uh, such and such court at this time. Greg. The judge, as we understand it, was supposed to hear a matter in Pretoria. We were told by the judge president that, a, that counsel certainly flew down, flew up from Cape Town. Clearly, the judge wasn't present because we know that the judge present had to call the judge who said, I'm not here. Do you recall a situation where everybody was sitting in, in court and the judge didn't appear? Yes, I was there. Huh? You were there? Yes. And the matter was supposed to proceed and the judge wasn't there? Yes. Is that right? That's Not about giving judgment. The matter is going to go on. There was a matter that we okay. to proceed. Yes. Now, I suppose what I then want to ask you is, it appears to be uh, such that the judge was in Limpopo at that time. It would appear, but it was it, it was not showing. Well, the one thing we seem to know yeah. is the judge was not in Pretoria on that day. Yes. Right? Which now, where the, he was, which, I have I have the slightest idea. Slightest All I'm asking is, we were told he was in the purple. The judge president wasn't contested in cross examination. That the judge president phoned the judge. Judge phoned my, my, Judge Moller, and he said to him, "I'm sorry, I'm in the purple." All I'm asking is, did you know that that he was in the purple? No, that I did not know. What Why I would you not know that? I'm not sure about that. Um, Look, let, let me put it in simple terms. I'm an incredibly forgetful person. And if my registrar is here, she would have said there are many times that the judge was found having coffee when, in fact, he'd set a matter down for 9.30. And fortunately, I managed to get to court by 9.35 because my registrar knew. I'm asking you the same question. I'm trying to understand would, what's going on. If I can answer, I yeah. would know if the judge is in court yeah. in Polokwan. Ah, yes. you would have known that. If he's in court in Polokwan. Because you would have then, then said, I would know. you would have said to the judge, so I interrupt you, Sorry. ah, we've got a clash. Yes. But if the judge was not in court in Polokwane and gone off fishing, for example, I'm just saying hypothetical, you wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that. I understand. Mr. Badella. Thank you, sir. You, you highlight in your affidavit at paragraph 18.4 uh, that on many occasions court files went, were, uh, were missing uh, when the Willis bag returned. I just want to find out, when, when Judge Maumela took files home, where did you record that, that he took certain or particular files home? Um, actually, on top of the, let's take it that the whole bag would the Willis back would take maybe four files. Mm -hmm. Then I'd record that the motion file or the opposed files. Uh, our judge took these files because the one that are on the wall, everything revolved around the wall. If a file is with the judge, I'd know on my system that I've packed this. I've packed such and such file. That's why I could be able to actually tell when we return because I'll come with a list. Um, then obviously it's a list of numbering because we'd number files depending on how judge would want to call them in court. Then I'd go through the list, take out the files, pack them. Then one file would be missing from my list. Did you tell Judge Momel about the missing file? Yes. And That's how I could manage to locate his car keys, vehicle keys go down to the vehicle, check if the file is there. I would find it sometimes, sometimes I would not find it. But the judge would be aware that one file is missing. Please go down to my vehicle, double check if the file is there. If not, please take my vehicle, hurry up to my house. Okay. 
So that record that you say you'd have, it would be on the wall too. The record of, of the files that have been taken out. On the wall will be due to roster off. Let's say it's let's say it's we it's Monday to Friday files. Mm. I'll bring a list separate that Monday to Friday files are so and so. In the bag the week before, the judge would take Monday to Friday files. So when he returns, two files are missing from the list that I have corresponding to the wall that this is motion week. That's how I would know that. And plus, I am the one who's packing the files all the time. You also mentioned that you would sometimes find missing pages. How did you establish that? Did you go through all the pages in the files that were taken? Now, I'll go through to the through pages of files that we needed in court. Like per se, some would be missing heads of argument from one party, which I know that they send. Then it would be easy for me to run to my computer, reprint it again. I remember I used to reprint and reprint uh, of uh, copies that are needed in the file. Probably notice of motion, the first page would not be there, but I know that the parties did send me their notice. That's how I would actually keep track of the files. And in one instance, the judge would say, um, in this file, there's no applicants as of argument, which I know on the wall I'd have updated that applicants have filed. Then I'll go to my computer, double check. The applicants did uh, send an email, luckily. If not, I'll have to recall again for them to resubmit a hard copy. Okay. Now, uh, 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 you've won the current uh, registrar of the judge will come and testify here that when she arrived, in actual fact, she didn't find any proper planning for managing the judge's file. What would be your comment on that? I wouldn't agree with that because the system that was left in play was this is what the judge is doing, this is what the judge will be doing. That's how the system was. Unlike finding everything all over and in, in, in a clutter space now. Further, Yvonne will testify that, that the files that, uh, when she arrived, she found files in a mess, not in an orderly manner in the church's office. What would you say to that? I'd say that's incorrect too, because the pictures that are filed in my affidavit depict how the office of the judge used to be. In eventual fact, every Friday I'd find myself trying to pack it according to how the judge would be able to understand it when he's looking for a file, if I'm not in his office at that time. She will further testify that some of the files and judgments were actually found were not found in the judge's chambers, but in the in, in the cupboards uh, where the registrars uh, sit. What would you say to that? I'd say that is incorrect, seeing that we do not have such covers to actually put files. If you would find a file, if you would, mm. in my table, it would be on top of a table okay. or underneath my table. Okay. We do not have any big files or cupboards to place in. So that's why I do not keep any file of a judge in my office. Now, you, you testify that when you left, you left without informing the judge that you were leaving. You, you remember that? That's correct. Uh, you also testify that you had a very good relationship with the judge. Yeah. Yes, correct. But when you left, you didn't do any handover, is that correct? Well, I'm not sure. Should I answer the handover or the relationship? Handover of, of your work to somebody else who's going to come in. The handover on that part, it was not my part of doing. I, Because my supervisor knew when I was leaving, mm. one. Two, uh, she's the one who's actually supposed to find someone for me to do a handover to. But that was not done. Yes, you agree with me. That could not be done because the judge was not aware that you were leaving. But my supervisor was aware. We're talking about the judge. Yes, the judge was not aware.
uh, uh, Judge Maumela will testify that when you left, he made a number of attempts to contact you without any success. What would you say with that? I'd say that it is incorrect because me and the judge actually would communicate on seeing that my number has never changed ever since. And even on WhatsApp, we would communicate. I still have judge number on my phone, WhatsApp, which sometimes shows online. So I would never receive any um, communication from the judge or his team. I mean, I'm just reminded, uh, but it's, it's just uh, a, a minor issue also, but uh, in this, not a minor issue, sorry. Uh, do you recall uh, any incident that a uh, laptop was run over, Judge Maula's laptop? Run over? Yeah. No, I do not. Run you don't uh, recall you ever running over Judge Maumela's laptop? Me? No. No. Running over a laptop? No. Uh, uh, no. Okay. That would be all, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Badela. Was the mob any re examination? Maybe, Chipperson, am a little bit objective if I ask this question, but uh, it wasn't clear, but it, uh, I got this, the sense that the judge might not have known about the wall. Is, is it possible that the judge didn't know about the wall and that the wall was where everything was being updated? Uh, it's not possible. Not where, possible. Where the judge seated, the wall was actually on the right hand side. And the wall, most of the time after updating, it's either updated while the judge is there, or if I do it in the morning before the judge arrives, then we go through the wall and the files in the office. Okay. Uh, no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Mob. Uh, Mr. Khitsani. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. You are excused. Thank you so much. You may, if you so wish, go back to the uh, Mpumalanga, is it? Mpumalanga? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> yes. You're no longer required to remain in attendance. Okay. Thank you. Thank so much. you. Mr. Mop. Uh, Chairperson, with your leave, I would, I would ask that we adjourn proceedings until tomorrow. Yes. Uh, I intend um, closing my case tomorrow morning. There are some aspects that arose during the proceedings today that I need just to clarify and see if I can confirm that up by tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to try and, and wrap it all up and, and, and tie it up nicely tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you. Are we, are we still... Uh, agreed that we start at nine. In, indeed, indeed. Well, well nine, that suit everybody. You know, traffic in Joburg uh, is a hassle. Uh, nine o'clock. I'm fine, uh, mm. President Chester. We have confirmed the same, Judge. You. You've confirmed. Okay. Thank you so much for cooperating. Um, we. I've come to the end of the hearing today, and we are joining until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you.